Okay. So, for those that are joining uh, right now, I basically have my laptop set up. So, if you see me looking over and writing stuff, it's because I'm writing on my laptop stuff on our task management software, Trello, to essentially just kind of figure out what is on our priority list that we need to fix. So, I've already kind of, hey, Ghost, I've already kind of started a play session. I've already evaluated where Chelsea is going to be so that she can just kind of hide in the corner while I basically evaluate the level of the civilian evacuation. Like, where does it feel? How does it feel? And then once I have a good idea, at the end of the stream, I'll be making a decision on whether to move on or to basically maybe delay a couple extra days uh, up to the next week, worst case, to determine what needs to be done still. Now, right off the bat, I have a list down here. It's stuff like AI, all of the vehicle spinning issue that Tarkin and all them are reporting. Um, then basically, like, uh, so this is another one. News events freezing the camera and place to unpaused. Garages need to be buildable from the engineers instead of just being able to place them like how they are in shadow clicks. Uh, carrier needs to be auto added to group one by default. Because most people don't realize that you can basically, um, add the carrier to a group right now. So I'm, we're going to just by default add it to group one when you first start a new game. So then that way it's more obvious you can take the carrier out of a group, you can assign it to new groups, whatever you want to do. And then having it to where the sky crane helicopters always come from the carrier going ahead instead of spawning magically at the edge of every island so that aircraft carrier placement is more important because then you can increase or decrease build times based off of just generally strategically where you're placing the aircraft carrier because all your resources are coming from there anyway because right now the sky crane just magically just spawn outside of your peripheral vision and if you're good enough and you know where they're coming from they will be like um you can watch them spawn effectively so that's what I have on the priority list I'm going to be evaluating basically things that people have been posting on the discord Fuck this song. Uh, basically, uh, essentially just doing that and essentially just kind of getting a gauge of what else needs to be done based off of just what people are noticing in chat, what I'm noticing while I'm playing. And then that way I can come to a conclusion in terms of what we're going to be doing. And then I'll have my laptop open. So if you guys are writing anything on Discord, I'll be keeping an eye on that. And I can see the Twitch chat. So let me jump right into this and get the PlayStation going. So right now, you can see again, I'm playing an evacuation heavy play style. Uh, I'll be uploading this onto our YouTube as well for those that basically just are going to watch it as a VOD later on. Um, and I'm basically, I'm just going to be kind of evaluating everything. Yeah, I don't feel like listening to this song. Um, and while we're at it, why don't we test that? So if I slow... Okay, you can see now, I, the game is paused. And effectively, that works now. So let me take that off the bug list, actually. Uh, let's see, where is it? All right, so that is now fixed. So I'm going to put that over here. Yeah, because that was not working. And this will be out. And let me see if this is fixed, too. That is fixed as well. So now you can jump. In pause, when you pause the world, your camera will not wait for you to unpause to like take you there. Because that was a bug that happened in the build you guys have right now. So let me take that off our list as well. Uh, just bear with me here. Uh, okay. And that's resolved. That's resolved. Okay, perfect. So we have a couple of bugs just right off the bat gone that you guys had reported. Um, so here, let me jump back over. Because like we fixed this one, we fixed the notifications one, and we fixed the jumping to one. And those were the three major tactical bugs. We fixed the bug of where the carrier would reverse. If you gave it a move order and then you did tactical pause, the code that was telling... It was basically like this code where it was like... You would tell the carrier to move, but then the code was like, why aren't I moving? 
and it didn't have the understanding to not run the unstuck reverse code. So basically, it was spamming the reverse code while you're on tactical pause because the carrier did not have a perception of time. It didn't support it. We didn't fix that. So now it's fixed. So if you issue a move order and then you pause the time, the carrier should no longer reverse forever because it was reversing out of the world in some people's play sessions. So that's fixed as well. But anyhow, it looks like Chelsea fucked me. And it looks like she... No, I'm fine. She's just over in this area. Never mind. For some reason, I was under the impression that she was over here in Peak Point. I don't know why there's a small infected population there. So basically, what I was going to do in this play session is I was just going to just record myself off from Chelsea with the little bird. And essentially make it to where um, I could just evacuate Presidio in isolation and stress test some of the things that people were concerned about in terms of it's very, very uh, cumbersome to uh, do like mass evacuations based off of the drop down because then you have to remember everything here. And then one thing was obviously the collapsing. So what we've been trying to do is we've been trying to basically hunt down and eradicate the bugs and the really bad ones at that. And then we were going to look at the suggestions, like having it to where you can collapse this. Or these are all, by, realistically, all of these, like, uh, let me pause it so I don't get myself killed. That's a nice feature now is I can pause the world and not get myself killed. Is that these would basically be collapsible and collapsed by default. And then you could expand them as needed. And then something that I know was suggested in the uh, announcements channel was having it to where you could effectively um, select, somehow being able to mass select zones to evacuate to one zone via a shift or a control click. That's something that I'm going to have to figure out if that's technically feasible or if we're going to have to go to a Solaris Excel sheet format where like you'd have to add like an advanced tab where you click here and then maybe it would show like a drop down and then you could mass click on zones and have like a, you could see their evacuation points and you could see them listed out. We got to figure out what we're going to do there. Because realistically, we need to be wrapped up with the evacuation stuff, like ideally in the next 24 hours, because we need to be on vehicles. Like the Bradley, the Abrams, all the other shit needs to be like rolling. And uh, because we need, we have a lot of fixes that we've earmarked for just doing when we get to the vehicles. Because we're going to be redoing some of the vehicle classes and cleaning them up from the ground up. And just make them a lot more performant. And to basically make them more understanding of like having more situational awareness. Um, I haven't turned on like the evacuation yet. I need to turn, I need to build some garages. So... In this, uh, you guys are going to be getting a new garage asset ideally in the next couple of days. They're, my understanding is Dimitri's putting the finishing touches on the final garage asset. I'll put a ping up. Let's say today's Tuesday. I would say by like Wednesday, Thursday, you guys should be seeing a ping in the Discord of the new garage asset. If nothing like, like McPoppins, like, like surprise, it's something else broke. I got to have him go over there and look at that and. What the hell is she doing here? Okay, that's wild. Let me write that down. Hold on. That's odd. Chelsea is not in the location of where news reports are occurring. We're going to have to clamp that. I think that was a bug. It's essentially, the news reports are supposed to fix her to a radius around there. But for some reason, she's rolling to run over here, which is why the infection population is small. So she basically, like, I mean, on paper, it makes sense that she can, she, like, doesn't make up her mind until, like, the, towards the end of the first day. But she can, like, erratically just decide to go cross map. But that's kind of annoying. Like, I would argue that when she's doing her news reports, she needs to be fixated to, like, maybe a two to, like, a one to two grid proximity of the news report. She shouldn't be able to just jump cross island, like, three to four zones from the last news report. 
So I'm going to write that down as a bug. Because realistically, Saber Harbor is here. At most, she should have rolled for her main base to be somewhere where my mouse is. Somewhere in this proximity should be where the like the max that she should have basically been like, that's going to be my base. Because now that's going to affect every decision going forward in terms of now, uh, basically, realistically, I should abandon this entire island, blow the bridges, and give it over to her. Because she's invulnerable. And I can deal with these like small pockets of resistance. They don't have Lieutenant. They don't have Chelsea. So realistically, I can just mass out some assaults, send them up there, blow up the bridges, and cut my losses. And realistically, that's what I should do. And I think that's what I'm going to do. Which fucking sucks. Yeah, fuck it. Let's blow, blow this joint. We're going to just cross over, and then we're going to basically have to destroy these. Which is unfortunate. Warning. But it is what it is. I have to basically sacrifice this island to her. Because I don't want to have an active war zone. Like right to where in the right where she's basically just chilling. So let me just make sure there's no surprises. I'm going to just destroy all that. I'm going to drop off my engineers over here. I'm going to basically like drop a permanent guard on both bridges so that if she does decide to cross back over, I can effectively damage her enough to where she will rethink that. Actually, no, I'm going to I'm going to just one up her. I'm going to send some guys up there. I'm going to immediately build my uh, thingy over here. Turn on night vision because I'm blind and she better not destroy my little bird. Yeah, because she's right there. There's, here, there's already a lieutenant. There's already spitters going around. Yeah, I need to get the hell out of here. So let's just cut my losses. And they can. I'll keep that sock running until the very last minute when she discovers it and destroys it. Because, I mean, there's no penalty for operating it inside of an infection zone. Like, eventually she'll scan it and destroy it. But for right now... It, oh, yeah, you can hear her kind of talking right now with the music. But uh, anyway, let me uh, drop some people down over here. And let me go ahead and just recuperate because I need to get some rapid mobilization going on because I really lost out on my evacuation. Like, I need to get that going because uh, I'm already behind. And I'll start with two and we'll go from there. Keep in mind, one of the changes that I earmarked for just changing is that, like, this Chinook, it's like Sky Crane just spawned from Naria right here. We're going to be getting rid of that. And they're going to spawn from the aircraft carrier as a smaller quality of life change. So your positioning of your aircraft carrier is going to be very important because that's going to be your resupply point. So I'm going to move the aircraft carrier and I'm going to dock little Timmy right here. If I can click it properly. And oh, he's already on his way. I think I clicked it. Is he going? Yeah, he's going. We possibly need to add a notification that says, are you sure you want to dock here? Because that's kind of annoying when you click on it. And it's like, you, if you're pixel perfect accurate, it's like, did I click on it right? Like, did I miss it? And then he just starts moving and you're like, oh, okay, yeah, I hit it right. Never mind. So uh, I really don't have that much money. And then also we snuck in another change with this update. Is that the engineers now have a primary and a secondary. And the engineers can spawn with a small as their secondary and a uh, ump as their primary. Now, before I release this to you guys on the private opt in on a Discord, it's going to have a pistol as well. And then we also did the same thing for the, uh, the spec ops and the sniper. The spec ops got some buffs, and the sniper got some buffs. He now has an MP, I think uh, the sniper has an MPSD as a secondary. So you can have a sniper with like a M107 or like the M14 or you can have and then you can also have him with a secondary like silenced MP5. So now your utility is a lot higher in terms of like how useful he is in combat scenarios because we realized that people weren't building them because they just they were very very limited use cases. So we essentially buff them quite a bit. 
in the hope of uh, improving their, you know, their reliability. That's probably my sock. Yeah, that's my sock. They found it. I mean, I already knew that was just a matter of time until they found it and destroyed it. And then ideally, we're going to be increasing the cost of transportation garages in the future. That's something that Michael's going to be looking at going ahead. We're doing a lot of behind the scenes optimizations to like how we do damage to make them easier to configure. Because right now, as it stands, it's not very optimal. And uh, we need to kind of do a little bit better about like allowing a more of rock, paper, scissors kind of approaches where like he's kind of shoehorned into like these weird balance scenarios because we have mid caliber, low caliber, and high caliber for guns. We don't have a distinction of like five point, uh, like the SCAR versus the M4 versus the, um, you know, something else like that. So like we're going to be changing that ideally in the next couple of weeks behind the scenes. So that way you'll notice that like the Ajax is more, pref like the Ajaxes are like better at birds, but like the smalls are is amazing. Because right now they're all grandfathered into like explosive weapons, do the same damage, and you have to like, it's really hard to get the right balance. So that's something we're going to be tweaking. I really need to turn on civilian evacuation. So let's get this, let's get this party started. And then from there, I'm going to go ahead and this is Blue Crest. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change the blue crest to basically be, um, I'm not blind. Where is blue crest? Blue crest, we're going to change that to evacuate to uh, Point Hill. And then we're going to go over, we're going to, we're going to see if we, yep, that bug is not fixed. We still have a bug where if you click on this, it's supposed to cycle. See, that time it worked. So I'm going to have to record that. Sometimes when you close it, it doesn't properly register. It's supposed to bring it up to make it easier, so you can just kind of go around and do this. So if I do Frontier Pier, and I set it to uh, the zone, I think it was Peak Point. No, it was Point Hill. You know what we might want to do? We might want to have a little icon that appears next to each thing for our usability. Where, like, if a zone is set to active intake, it will have, like, an icon either before or after the point hill to help you signify. So you don't have, because you can only have two active evacuation points. But theoretically, it would make sense to kind of have, like, a, a, a quality of life. Like, point hill is my evac. So maybe if I go over here and I, like, let's say, for instance, like, I go here. And I'm like, like clicking on like Braddock Parkway. Um, it's just easier to like set all that up. I don't know. I'm gonna have to think about that because we need to find a better way of setting that. So that way you don't have to go back and forth, back and forth. Because that was what they were talking about in the Discord. And that's why I'm kind of playing it right now to see like what kind of needs to be done. So let me skip this song. Uh, let's do Saver Harbor, and let's do that to... Yeah, because even I'm kind of fumbling, because I don't even have all my own game zones memorized, so I can't expect you guys to have that memorized either. So yeah, I'm going to write that down, is I'm going to have it to where, uh, when you are switched to a zone here, and then you're choosing from the drop down here, if that zone has an active intake, it will draw like a helicopter or like an evacuation icon uh, on this, like on that text string, potentially. Let me write that down. So, evacuation targets need to either have a color change or an icon added before or after the text to show what where your current evac zones are, what your current evac zones are. So that's a coolly quick change, I think, that could really, really get more like speed out of the whole system. Um, okay, so let me uh, let me just go back over here and just kind of do some management. So save your harbor. Is here. 
And that's point hail. So point hail is what I need to remember. And I need to go over here to Grissom Military Barracks. And point hail, as I need to go to Braddock Proudluck. And I need to go to... Okay, point hail. So now, theoretically, all those buses are going to run around and start grabbing people and bring them home. So let me go and pause the game. And then I'm just going to kind of watch and observe. The base is under attack. I need to effectively kind of up my game here. Engineer. I need to start building walls. I need to start building repeaters. And I need to just start focusing on my defense. I need to start setting teams up north to effectively check for infection. Now, the Advent Center is reporting that there's no infection in those zones, I believe, by a quick glance. So it's just a procedure, really. So there's a system. And what the system basically does, supposed to do, is that you'll notice that these zones don't say there's a small infection population anymore. So if Chelsea fuck off to another zone, like over here, it will passively transfer over those infected across map. So that's why sometimes if you go into a zone and you kill all the pods, the, the infected pod, the infection population will slowly decrease, like in Stellaris, like the RVs or the generals got lost, and it will transfer them silently from these provinces to the actual infected provinces where the infected are housed to is like a way to kind of like recycle her resources. It's gamey, but it was the best way we could think of without like overcomplicating it and making it like whack-a-mole. Because that'd be a nightmare. If you like went into a zone, killed all the structures, and because it was very high infection level, now you would have like whack-a-mole infection pods constantly appearing, constantly appearing, and it would just be boring. So we made a decision to go in the Stellaris route and just transfer them over slowly. Uh, once you've cleared out the infection pods and there's no viable way for them to spread and, you know, exert control. Um, so what I need to do is I need to kind of... If I can zoom in and do a better job of placing. I don't know if that's going to be good enough. And then let me go ahead and switch my playlist over. What am I on? I'm on my DJ. Let me switch over to Deep House. Who doesn't love Deep House? And then let's see. How are we doing? This is on EVAC. That was not on EVAC. God, I'm stupid. That was on EVAC. The other one isn't. So that would probably explain why my efficiency was terrible. Let's see. How are we doing? So they're at max. Callback bus. So we have something weird going on here. So we have a disabled bus. That was weird. Well, good thing I caught that on recording. We're going to have to investigate what in the heck happened there. Um, looks like we definitely need to still hunt down some bugs with the changes that we've done with the evacuation. Have they not destroyed? Oh, they're destroying my uh, generators slowly but surely. Let me just d destroy those so that I don't get the notifications anymore. Those notifications can be kind of annoying at times. Like, good. They're leaving with 128, 128. Let's go ahead and let's add in some more helipads. Now, you'll notice that we still haven't added in the double helicopter evac. We've been literally just... Uh, find, like, we've basically been backlogged with bugs. Like, we're basically just working on bugs, and then we're going to work on getting the rest of that list done, which was the double helicopter evac system. And then that way they had a, a switch out system. So let me see here. Let me go here. Let me see how we're doing. You know, I wonder if it would make more sense to kind of have like a statistics page in the future, maybe. Where you can view out, you can view maybe the efficiency of your evacuations. And you can kind of see which zones are not being fast enough for evacuations. So you can make the choices of like moving certain bus depots around. They're not doing a good, a good job. But maybe that's something to do in the future. I'm not going to worry about that right now. But I'm going to earmark that as a wish list item where you'd have some kind of like statistic where it would let you know like which buses are actually doing their jobs. So you can kind of earmark it for like de destruction of moving them closer to zones to get the min max of kind of like 
getting uh, evacuations going fluidly. Um, so let me build some assaults. Uh, we're going to build like two. And then let's go ahead and see how we're doing on the holding area. No one's really in the holding area right now. They're going. How are we doing on this bus? It seems to be working. I don't know what this. I'm really broke right now. I need to get. Let me just build another uh, point for the. Actually, no. I should be building socks to supplement my income. That would allow me to double down on the um, on the bloody uh, evacuation quicker. So let me see. Let me check the map. Let's go and let's get a yellow. Let's grab that one. And then from there, we're going to land this little bird on the carrier deck so that it can passively just get gas and not have to worry about running out. Well, let's get him back home. And I probably shouldn't have built that actual... Um... Hold on. Oh, yeah, then we add the pause button. So if the... If the basically, the... Um... The buses keep going into stupid situations where it's not clear, or you want them to basically wait for the go-ahead to like go into a province that you've set to evacuate. If you don't want to go and like pause it at the admin center, you can pause the bus, whatever they're currently doing right now, send people in, do whatever you want to do, clear it out, and then resume them. So that so instead of returning them back to base. That'll just kind of give you the moment to just kind of reevaluate the situation really quickly. Then we, we actually we obviously still have to return to base. And then you have the health bar that we added because the health bar was not very apparent with the old system. We still got some clipping going on here. So I'm going to take a picture of that actually because we need to fix that clipping because it looks kind of janky. So let me just put that in my Discord, and then uh, I can move back to what I was doing. There we go. So I'll get that fixed. It's like a small little cosmetic fix. It needs to reformat. So let's see how we're doing here. All right. A base structure has been damaged. Let's see. They all just went into that helipad. Oh, yeah, that's why, because they were dropped at the civilian zone. So they were counted as being checked in. And then the system basically sent them over. Are they kind of teleporting right now? I'm odd. I'm going to write this down as an earmark on the video. Let me just kind of take down the time code. We're at 29 minutes. Let me write that down. 29 minutes in. On the Twitch stream. Civilians seem to be teleporting. And I'll link this afterwards. Uh, to, I'm, again, I'm just taking notes for myself, so just bear with me. Um, we currently don't know what's causing that devil. Uh, I've seen it. Derek's seen it. But we've never, we haven't been able to catch what causes it. Because right now, Chelsea's not visible. So whatever is causing it is like this random combination of things that we haven't been able to hunt down yet. So if you can... Give us a save file where Chelsea's visible and you reload and she's still visible. Give that to us. That way we can just reload it, reload it, reload it. Look at her. Look at what's around her. Because it's a it's a bug with the fog of war system, if I had to guess, where it thinks that you have line of sight in that area. And you don't. So it's one of those things where we need to kind of like tighten up the, the the bolts, but we don't know what's causing it, per se. And, you know, let me go ahead and let me build a uh, an MO-10 here. We're going to put it right here. Just so that those defenders passively get some MO. So that way I don't have to worry about babysitting them. Let's toggle the evacuation here. And then let's spy on the buses and see how they're doing. And then how are we doing over here? Okay, that's why. When I when I got rid of that bus, that bus malfunctioned. So this one's just not been operating since I told the bus to screw off. So we did add that for what Tarkin was suggesting in our Discord. Because he wanted a way to just get rid of the buses. But 
You should get a refund for that. Refund for disabling buses, because that doesn't make any sense. Why would we destroy the bus? You know what? Yeah, why would we get rid of the bus and not give you a refund for it? It's like, yeah. So that's kind of weird. And then we added a callback button too. So if your bus is doing stupid stuff, you can go to your garages, click the callback button, and then basically, I don't remember if they stay there. I think you have to pause them. So it's more of like you're going into a conflict zone. You need to calm down. You're doing things I don't like you that you're doing. You need to come back, and then you'd have to pause them. So disable and pause are the two additions that are coming. And then you have a destroy. Um, let me see. How are we doing? We're not doing that good when it comes to evacuation right now. You can see that like we have some civilians kind of loitering here. So I'm going to take down this time code. And I'm actually going to save this for investigation later. Can I delete? Let me delete my... We really need a mass delete. I have so many saves from like testing stuff. And then like when people give me saves to like the test bugs. You know, let me just, uh, I'll just save it for right now and then I'll come back to it. So I'm going to call you Civvies Idling. Save. So that way I can save that and attach it to my um, Trello card. Yes, there is already. I leave it on because uh, I have a bad habit of recording content for like uh, for podcasts or whatever. And then I can't go back to go look at things. So like right – where is it? Right here, enable auto saves. I have a bad habit of turning it off, and then it screws me over. So you could go and you could turn that off. It's supposed to auto save every like five minutes, and then it deletes after some threshold of like three to five, I think. And then we also added this in. It's a little tool tip. Let me let me write that down. Add tool tip to corpses setting in. Gameplay options. So I was talking to Tarkin and some other people on the public Discord, and we were testing it. I think it was the Patreons. Yeah, the Patreon people were talking to me in the chat, and I think it was Tarkin, and he was like, can you fix this? Like, it's really lame how the bodies disappear so quickly, because it doesn't really help the immersion. So I was like, well, let me see what I can do. So then we tested it in secret between me and Tarkin and a couple other people on the Patreon channel. Uh, and then we were trying to find some good settings and some good values to where it would be still performant. The ragdolls would still be there long enough. So we settled on 360 seconds and 120 as the default. And then uh, obviously if you have a slower, lower-end computer and you want to like not you know, see persistent dead bodies over a long period of time, you turn that down. Really good computer, you turn it up. Really good CPU, you turn it up. That is CPU based. So if you want to see more dead bodies and you don't care, turn it up. But the hard limit's 360 dead bodies, and the dead bodies don't save. So if you save and reload, the dead bodies will disappear. We're not going to worry about fixing that because it's very trivial. We'll get to that point eventually because there's some things that we need to work out technically when we get to like our interaction with chaos physics. Uh, because as of 5.4, chaos physics and, and the destruction is more battle tested, more performant. Uh, I would say anything above a 10th generation CPU, i5, i7, i9 is perfect, or the AMD equivalent. Uh, and then you want roughly around, I would argue, around a minimum of 30, a minimum of 3200 megahertz RAM speed. DDR, what the fuck, hold on, what am I, I don't even remember, I, I have a bad memory for RAM speed, do you want, what am I, DRAM, I think I'm on DDR4, 
No, I'm on five. I think it's like DDR4 is really what you want. Let me open CPU-Z. I'll just tell you right now. CPU-Z is a brilliant program for telling you like what your BIOS setting is. Is your CPU's BIOS update right? Not CPU, your, your, up, your BIOS update is right. Is your memory running at the right clock speed? What clock speed they're running at? You know, and so on and so forth. Uh, so like you can see, where is it? DDR5. I mean, DDR4, DDR5 is perfect. I would recommend anything above 3200 megahertz. Right now, for some reason, this is reporting 3000 megahertz. But you can see that like it's actually running at 6000, so that's a bug. You set that in your BIOS for turning on XMP, which is basically, uh, yeah, it's like a whole thing you got to research online. Because most computers, like you build your own computer, XMP isn't on by default. But you can see like it's DDR5, 6,000 megahertz, and the base clock speed is 3,000 megahertz when you buy it out of the box. And then you have to go and turn on XMP in your motherboard to have it use the Intel clock speeds that overclock your RAM to 6,000. But you have to buy like higher performance RAM for that. So I'm not really sure what's going on here. We got some AI clogging going here, but I saved the save file for that. Let me see if I can... Uh, Decouple them. Could it be an issue with the holding bay? The holding bay isn't full. So, this is a bug. I have the same file saved, so theoretically, this would probably take us like maybe 20, 30 minutes to. to oh, there we go! So, again, that was. No, that's only some of them fixing. Hold on. Let me build uh, another holding area just to see if they magically fix, and then. Let me see, is this the new holding area? Yeah, it, no, that's the, whole, that's the old holding area. So we're going to give you guys two holding areas. We're going to give you this one, which is going to be resized to about 10 to 20 people. And then we're going to give you the 100-person holding bay. That's going to be about the one that you see in our Discord pings. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Because the people that are on YouTube, they're going to watch this and like, the next couple of days are going to be like, what in the hell is he talking about? So I'm talking about this. So this is the new holding bay that you're going to be getting. That's the super duper deco version. That's going to fit 100 people. Uh, we, I don't know if we're going to be able to figure out having people in here. Because long term quality of life, we want to have people physically in there. So you can walk in there as an operator and stare at people. Like if you ever played a division... And you have that zone that you build up and you protect in Division 1 and 2, those settlements. That's what we want to get it to, conceivably. But it's more of like getting the animations, getting it animated, and then having those groups be able to dynamically splice and attach them all over the place. So that's more of like a nice quality of life thing to have. And then eventually you'll see like uh, intercoms and like uh, audio stuff going on. But I'm worried about that. I was like, it's nice to have, but it doesn't really affect gameplay. So I want to get like all of the gameplay stuff in there, getting towards the end of 1.3. And then like as we're doing the co-op and all the more trivial stuff to get ready for co-op, I can task my audio engineers and other stuff with the like to basically the audio and animation guys to basically get all that done conceivably. Because I mean, we have a limited budget every month. So I put 90%, 95% into gameplay. 5 to 10 percent in the visuals because I don't care about visuals right now. It's more so about like does it play right? Is what I'm more worried about. So anyhow, uh, let me pull this up. That's why right now, like you guys don't see us with like a lot of like squad chatter and all that all costs money. So it's one of those things where it's like maybe if they end up making a really good AI voice actor thing. But I know that Chris was talking about having it to where like. They're doing a lot of good training of AI of voice actors right now where you can do like voice acting in the future theoretically where you can type in stuff and then you can set tones and all that. Maybe that's something we can look into in the future when it actually becomes more realistic and like, he, and, like you can't tell the difference, which is getting pretty damn close if you follow AI right now. But for right now, we're not going to worry about that. We'll reevaluate that when we get to that point. So we have some voice actors that we work with and then we do some v we do AI for prototyping, and then we switch it out before anyone ever gets to play it 
see it, whatever. Because it's really cheap to figure out, like, how things sound, how things look. But right now, some AI stuff looks ugly. And we use it more conceivably in, like, doc like figuring out um, designs of enemies, designs of, like, designs of rooms. And then we hand that off to, like, a concept artist to kind of give, like, a, uh, like a, a, a mood board or an art board that's allowed to direct the artist in a way that we couldn't do by just going on the internet and looking stuff up. Because typically when you're working on a video game, you create like these boards or reference boards for enemies, units, weapons, whatever. And then you give that to a concept artist. And that's meant to kind of streamline the process. But now if we can use AI art to like generate something that's like 80 to 70% of the way, and then they're like, oh, we get exactly what you want. And then we pay them to take it the rest of the way and make something original. So, like, I'm sure it'll get to that point for voice acting and even for programming in the future. I know some programmers that now use that to help them figure out mathematical issues. They use AI sometimes for C++, but we don't do that. Everything on the project right now is hand-coded, figured out by ourselves, and cried in the corner painstakingly every night. And then you can see a good example of the new corpse system. Well, these dead bodies are not going to sit here, and they're going to litter. Uh, yeah, we fixed the Apache bug for reloading, and it actually trickles out to the, the, the common soldier. So there was a bug. I caused it. Uh, we, it was from code that was from a long time ago. We first wrote the game where if we spam out the reload system, like, they get hit. They see another enemy. Uh, just some kind of event outside of the normal flow control that can spam the reload code. Oh my god, I gotta reload. Oh my god, I gotta reload. It would actually reset the reload time. And at the time, we wrote this when we didn't understand the engine. Like, everyone on the team, this is our first game by all means. Michael's the only one that's worked on, like, a ship game. Like, he's worked on Division and some other stuff. So he's, like, ex Ubisoft. But for everyone else, we're, like, modders. We're, like, like, we're, we just kind of learned this and dabble in it. So it's one of those things where it's like we have to kind of learn the hard way. And this was something that we didn't realize. That if you keep calling a timer, it will reset that timer. So every time that our code would jump the line, we'd call reload. And then something else that would happen, uh, an event, dynamically, in gameplay, uh, would basically call the reload code again in an emergency. It would then cause it to take twice as long, three times as long for them to reload in combat scenarios, basically decreasing their combat effectiveness. And essentially, we fixed that by basically just having a, a safety check that we added for the Apache, for every weapon, that basically says, if you call the reload code again, while the reload is already started, ignore it. We don't care. You've already started reloading. There's nothing else you can do. Unless it's like an animation cancel for like the operator, then it's valid. Otherwise, who cares? And while you're at it, I'll show you guys a new operator that Michael's been working on alongside kind of cleaning up what we already have going on. Uh, they will do that. They will do that. They actually... Oh, fuck. Where's little Timmy? Where are you? Damn it! All the guys of RPGs are down the way the hell over here. Um, two birds. Four assaults. They're kind of fucked. It might be fine if I macro. If I macro hard enough. We'll try it. And that's the beauty of the tactical pause now. I don't have to be like, oh my god, they're coming and panic and do all this other shit. Because, like, you can just pause it and then you can go over here and just start building units and be like, alright, cool. Uh, we'll build some units here. We'll give them the shotguns because that's good at AoE and the birds are going to get really close to you. So, theoretically, the spaz is perfect. If they're already in close quarters. And then you just come back and switch out their weapon when you're done. Now Winters is looking pretty fucked right now. So I'm going to cloak her. And unpause. And they're going to break aggro. 
And then they need to get the shooting. And they're look they're close enough to where I think I can throw a grenade and damage them. Looks like we got it. Looks like that was a bug. For some reason, they didn't detect that she had basically moved, so they kept attacking her old location when she cloaked. Theoretically, that's okay because the I, I think the problem is is they think she's still at their old location, so they do an attack order there in the hope to kill her, which is a bug that's. Not really we planned for, her, but I guess it makes sense. Because it's trying that's her last perception of where she was physically. So if you don't move her, she dies. So it might be fine to leave that right now. I'll let it play out for right now. So little Timmy finally came back. Late as always. So we're gonna just build some more defenses for the next time that happens. And then um uh, let me see, did we I really hate that restrictor range. Like, even as the project director, I'm like, this is dog shit. I'm going to put that in Michael's channel again to look at that going into tomorrow. Because, like, let me build this and see if it's a visual bug. Because I still feel like the restrictor needs to be tripled. But w let me let me build it. Let me play it out. Because you figure, like, I don't want to make it to where it's, like, spam restrictors. Like, it needs to be, like, Jurassic Park almost. Where it's, like, you build them, they have a good range. I mean, not necessarily Jurassic Park, but the idea is that if your power goes out, um, you would have grids, you'd have backups. And then the, the Leviathans, the AI, would be intelligent enough to know, attack the power grids, take your power out. Have other people, like, little, like the birds go around, take out your power, then set in the Leviathans. Then set in the birds. Because then at that point, it's more strategic and they're dividing and conquering. So it's one of those things that we need to kind of look into conceivably going into the future. And that's why I'd rather the restrictors be. But they have a large radius. They have a huge power consumption. And the AI has to outsmart you. And it's like Jurassic Park when the power is out. You know, you start panicking. You start get setting units all over the place. You know, you mass engineers to go and get the power back online. You know, and if you didn't plan and build power pylons in the back line, and all your power is in the front, and it's like there's no redundancy, they're going to immediately jump on that. And then you figure even if the repeater comes up, they'll still stay in the area and still try and inflict enough damage to hurt you. Um, let me see... Yeah, we don't like doing VO, free VO. I believe anyone that works for us needs to get paid. So I don't like doing stuff that basically is free. Like, we don't do that volunteer stuff on our team. Like, we did it a long time ago, and it just caused too much issues. In terms of, like... So it's one of those things where, like, if we can't pay for the service, we're not gonna... We're not gonna get it, generally. It's like even for localization. Like, we stopped doing that for localization because it was just too cumbersome. And it's like, it's just all over the place. So it's like, I don't want to, I really don't want to do that. Like, you figure, that might change later on in the future, my opinion on that, for, for right now. I My 110% is in the gameplay and just making sure everything sounds right. And then we'll get, like, those, like, trivial elements, like voice acting, more voice acting, more, like, immersion elements. Slowly and surely will be trickled in. What are they hitting? Who, who is... Oh, you. Yeah, because I didn't do a good enough job actually building Warning. bloody defenses. Is under attack. I love hard work. Oh, he's building. They're attacking. So, yeah, that's why they're, you know, destroying it. Let me just get this... Once I get this power generator on, they'll solve the problem, and then he'll automatically turn around and just gun them all down. So how are we doing on evacuation? Is there an improvement in output? So it looks like those civilians that were here eventually did fix. But we need to stop those from happening altogether. Because that's just, that's life or death in terms of basically efficiency when it comes to these systems. So regardless, I took down that save file so we can look at their logic and be like, what are they thinking? Where's the confusion? And I need to... Where am I still being attacked? Here? Okay, let's double... Let's double, uh, let's build some restrictors. Engineer, ready. Let's build um, an Avenger turret 
but overlooks the coastline. And then that way he can just kind of hit them before they even get close. Um, and then let's um, let's put another Avenger over here. Because these Avengers have a very good range. So theoretically, I don't need to build them, like, buy everything else. And because the Avengers are out of the way of, like, traditional units, they shouldn't be, like, hit by spitters. Juggernauts should not be prioritizing them with their rocks. Because they're going to hit here, and then they're going to do their threat and their attack stuff here. Um, so how are we doing still on the evacuations? Are we having a good... So you're not really helping out right now. What are you doing? Base is at civilian capacity. Okay, so that is more so a hard limitation of how many civilians we can have evacuating. What, why is that? So we have 100 people. Definitely a bug going on here. So I'm going to save it again. Oh, not that kind of save. And I'm going to call it Holding Bay Evac Halt. Fuck it. I spelled it wrong, but he'll get the point. And uh, then, let me write down this time code. Holding bay, evac, halt. And then write down the time code as 52 minutes. And then, let's keep going. So we're at 50 frames per second. It is a lot better than what we had earlier when I showed you guys last time we were playing. Um, there's still some things we need to improve going into the next couple of hours, well, the days, rather. Um, so basically alleviate it, because I, I feel like uh, so some changes that I did and some changes that Derek did, that we need to just kind of like do some corrective logic. I think Tarkin was mentioning that sometimes the evacuation, the evacuees overwhelm the system. Because right now there's 90 people in here. That's nine mobs. Because each mob consists of 10 people. Um, oh. That's 19. How are they doing? Okay, let's... Uh, that's really odd. Let's do a quick little order of operations thing. I know conceivably how these AI think. Let me turn the helipads on and off. Let me turn that back on and off and see if that has any effect. If it doesn't, then it's a lot more complicated of a matter and then it's definitely going to have to go to Derek or myself for actually analyzing the save file, looking at what those AI are thinking and why they believe they can't get there. Because there is definitely some kind of bug going on that was introduced in the, next, in the last uh, patch that probably... It's likely tied to the buses, but I'm guessing. I don't know. I would have to. We'd have to look at them tonight and figure it out. Because conceivably, I'll still release this for playtesting on the private opt-in. Because there's enough good in here. It'll hurt some evacuation quotas. But that's why it's experimental opt-in. It's an experimental pre-build. Or it's not even a normal experimental because it's so volatile. So you figure uh, it'll be fine. Fuck. Oh, hello, little Timmy. I have a friend for you. His name is Small, and he wants to show you the way. Oh, he has block. Shoot him! Destroy him now! Oh, shit! He's gonna freeze. Yes, I knew it! He was gonna freeze! That's still a bug. I knew that was still an issue. That's on my list. No! When we did the chains to the corpses and the ragdolls, what used to happen is that they would ragdoll almost immediately and get deleted. So that would never happen. So two things need to happen. We need to check the mass of objects, increase the mass, so that the, the, the friction or the velocity that's applied to the ragdoll is not as severe, so that doesn't happen. And then we need to make it to where they, uh, the, the, the timeout of when it deactivates the ragdoll for performance reasons takes into consideration what physics state they're in. Are they still falling? If they're still falling, it will set a timer and recheck it every couple of seconds based off of a threshold. 
so then that way, uh, it does, they don't all check in the same millisecond. If you mass kill like a hundred people, they don't all check the processor at the, at the exact same millisecond for low-end computers. And it's stretched out over a, a period of time. And then uh, when they realize that they've landed, wait a couple more seconds, turn off the ragdoll. And then that way, it would solve this guy becoming flying Jesus. So now, with this improved quality of life change, I can switch him back to his other gun, and he's... Oh, shit. A base facility is damaged. Asshole. Can I, can I rebuild? He, he didn't do it that time. So it's some kind of bug with the physics system of how we're interacting with it, some value without understanding, where based off of friction or velocity or some kind of transfer between the, tra the, the projectile and it hitting him, he goes flying. Because you can see he, he died perfectly. But then there's another bug. He's breathing in place. So he ragdolled, and then the ragdoll transitioned to an animation blueprint. Gotta write that down. Uh, special, infected, went dying, revert to animation, blueprint, when dying. Alright, got it. I'll have to fix that going into tomorrow, because by the time I finish doing all this playtesting, I'll probably be done for tonight. And probably go play uh, Borderlands 3 or something, because I've been at it since like 11 a.m.? 10 a.m.? That's going on like 7, so I'm going to wrap pretty soon after I finish playtesting. And then pick up the bugs tomorrow. With whatever Derek doesn't catch. So let's see how we're doing on the evacuate. Oh, shit! I forgot to set Point Hill. You know... Let me see. Let me write down... Power Plant... Well, I mean, we're only two pro one and a half programmers, so I mean, a typical RTS game has a dozen programmers. So I mean, we're doing the best we can with what we have, Panther. So we have to we have to balance features, bugs, performance every day. So it's it's a constant heave ho tug in terms of making sure everyone's happy and to make sure that we're hitting enough of every spectrum. So, Power Plant Island is a set to evacuate to Point Hill. Uh, where is it? There we go. And then, let's see. Look, the performance is dipping a little bit. What's that sound? I hear a juggernaut or something about to like. Let me put. Let me build a tack sensor. I have an uncanny feeling that there's something below me, or something nearby me. Let me see what David's saying. Yes. So for your question, Devil, uh, depending on how volatile they are, we will have our period of like a three to five days, maybe a week at most, to build our first proof of concept vehicle that will use all the underlying systems implemented. Destruction, pathfinding, dynamic ramping up and down of speed, based off of other objects around it, like vehicles traveling in a convoy. And then we'll put that out on like the Ajax. And then it'll be one vehicle that potentially is like a dummy vehicle. It's not even gonna be the old vehicles. It'll be like a it'll be like test Ajax. Uh, it'll have it'll be like buildable from the motor pool. And it would be like it'd have a tool it'd have, it would have like a tool tip. It'd probably have like some basic cost and it would be like, this unit is experimental. It's meant for basically evaluating the driving AI. Proceed at your own risk. 
And then the idea is that we put that out on experimental. I don't think it'll require a pre-build because we just we would just make a new unit and then make that unit buildable, and then we would perceivably uh, have an evaluation period of a week and see what you guys come back to us with. And then based off of that, we would decide, do we need to reevaluate and change some things? And if everything is good, then at that point, we would start rolling out the current vehicles, get rid of that test dummy vehicle, test that, have an experimental. Everyone's good, everyone's happy. Then, at that point, we would take it and we would add to the doctrine tree. At that point, we will basically redo the doctrine tree, move some stuff around, add some new stuff that we've been planning, and foreseeably add the Abrams, the Bradley, and the MRS, and that the Apache and a couple other things will be moved into a fourth category called Airborne. So you'll, gain, so you'll basically have four cores here, essentially. And some stuff that's more Airborne inclined, like the Air Blackhawk, the uh, Shawnee, the Merlin, we moved over. Or the Armored Core. Well, I mean, every core is going to generally gain about six items. And, you know, stuff like that, basically. So that that's the plan. And you figure, um, yeah. So anyway, let me build a LMG, because I know that's really, really good for killing everything in the game. Like, you really would only want to build a, um, what's it called? A sniper. There's a supplementary one where you have every two MGs and then a sniper in the back. Because the sniper can single out the higher threat units. And then the LMGs are taking out the crowd control units, like the, like the standard infected. Because we have a target-based system where they're supposed to basically target enemies of a certain caliber first. So like the LMGs will target standard infected. The snipers will target juggernauts and spitters first. Suppo they're supposed to. Obviously, there are some situations where they'll target it. They'll they'll deviate based off of threat. In other situations where they make a they make a judgment call essentially, uh, and it's really up to them to determine best what's what's best in every situation. Uh, so let's jump around and see how are we doing on evacuees. Terrible. So what we're gonna do. Is that we're going to we're going to see if we can improve this a little bit. We're going to send down one of our engineers down to the hill down there, and we're going to build a couple more helipads. And then how are we doing on filling them? So that one's not even filling, and our holding bays are still 22 and 100. So we definitely have some issues going on there. Um. We don't need martial law curfew because there's no incursion in our zone. You only do that if you have an incursion in your zone and you want to slow down the passive infection tick. So what I need to do is that the infected are not really hitting this point. So I'm going to take advantage of that by fortifying it. And I'm going to build a missile turret for countering the, the heavier enemies, the bigger ones. Then I need to build... A sock. I got that one already. Let's see, where's the next sock I can build? Let's do a blue up over here. And then we're... right now we're gonna leave that alone for building RPGs. Right now the guard towers are gonna stay with the current assessment or arrangement ornament of weapons. And then basically we're going to leave the, the, the tank busters and all that to the uh, engineer. The engineer will be getting some more combat oriented buffs in the future to make him more versatile. So he can be caught brought into combat situations. Michael's working on that in the back end. But right now he's trying to clean up some really bad visual issues that occur with like how we've built the underlying like IKs and fabrics and the animation systems that we have currently in play in the game. So that's something that we'll be looking into as well. You know, I don't think it actually I would have to move Yeah, it's not really gonna work out actually. If I have the um let me do this. You you need to go somewhere with this. So we're gonna move you over here. And actually we're gonna just build 
this over here because it makes no sense to build them that far away because I can't secure it easily. And based on how the system works, it doesn't actually foreseeably like move them. Um, like they're gonna have to be dropped at the admin center, and then they'll foreseeably have to come down there based off the limitations of how the system was programmed. And then I just saw another issue when moving. Moving a dynamic civilian group, they will uh, the defenders that are around the camp don't teleport with the camp moving. I'll put that as like a low priority thing though. And eventually they should move. Oh, they'll just die. And then keep in mind, again, I'm going to repeat this like a, like a broken bat, but these Chinooks are no longer going to be spawning at Anaria. Like right now, they're just spawning from somewhere right here. Those Chinooks are going to be coming from your aircraft carrier very soon. Not Chinooks. Sky Cranes. Sorry. Sky Cranes are going to be coming from your LHA-6. I'll build a little bit of redundancy. and There's definitely some frame rate dipping going on. I'm going to save this as a reference file for investigation. So, FPS drop issues. And I'm going to take that down as a time code. One hour and eight minutes. Oh, grenade animations, grenade row animations don't play always when enacted while in tactical pause. That's a new bug. That bug was created by the addition of adding tactical pause. Okay. The good thing about the thing is most of these bugs are pretty darn easy to fix. Yes, there was a zombie in the air, but he despawned after a while because of the 360 timeout. I'm going to be working on the ragdolls more tomorrow. That's the pretty much what I'm going to start with tomorrow. It's trying to eradicate all ragdoll related issues. I mean, there's definitely some kind of frame rate dip going on. Oh shit. And then we got some kind of interaction issues. Let me see. Yeah, dead bodies are blocking the operator. The operator has a special collision. And that wasn't an issue until we changed the uh, ragdoll time. Operators is blocked by corpses. If I could spell corpses right, Jesus Christ. Let me check something. I bet they're not blocked when you're in RTS because we changed her collision profile. Yep. It only happens when you're in our and when you're controlling her. And that's why we missed it. So I'll have to fix that. Because we we put we assign a more third person centric, more detailed collision. When you're playing as the operator, so it felt, so it feels like more like Resident Evil 4 or like the Division, where it's a lot more accurate. But by doing that, 
We have to test it a little. We need to test it for like obviously situations like what you just saw. I know. Yeah. And then let me see if this still works. Let me write this down. I love this feature. I like when I when we get when we get the chance of improving this. Let's see if it still works. No, it doesn't. So like yeah, there used to be a feature where you could basically order them to move, but it doesn't look like it's working right now. We gotta fix that. Cause that was a thing from Freedom Fighters that I really like. Is that we need to have it to where you can command squads and order them around an operator. I'll have to find the time to fix that because it's kind of a low priority because people want us to kind of focus more on the RTS elements. But when I get some time, I'll see about looking into why that move order is no longer working. Because we wrote that quite a bit ago. The hell? What's up? Oh, hello! No. Oh. The faint what? Oh hell no. Bastard. And he chooses to attack the the dynamic civilian compound. Okay. Uh let's see here. I can uh I can solve this real fast for you, good sir. Where is my I have a present for you, good sir. Actually, there's one more thing that I need to do, and I don't know why I didn't do this earlier, is that you figure I need to build some garrison tents. I need the population. I have the money, but I don't have the population, so that's going to get me killed. Um, and then, realistically, I really need to, I need to build more units. I've been like talking and focusing so much on the game that I haven't actually been doing anything when it comes to that. And then let's let's turn off the tax sensor for now. The tugs. But the visual artifact just distracts me. And then do we still have an engineer up here in this vicinity? No, we don't. So we're gonna need to build another engineer. For the small. And then Winters, you're gonna have to delay her him. Yeah, that LMG is shredding him. I gotta make a mental note that Michael needs to go in and focus on the, uh, the throw animations for the grenades. It's still bad. It's still ugly. Run! Run, woman! No, he's gonna destroy the repeater! Kill him faster! Oh, mother fuck. You there, do your job. Thank you. And you're always late. Jesus Christ. And that's the beauty of a tactical pause. I can focus on that, build a bunch of units, and then just focus on the combat. What's actually going on in front of me. So let's load up some people, and we need to go... Actually, no. You, I can't afford to leave. So you need to stay here. And... You could go over there and harass. And then we need to build... Let's go ahead and let's build some vehicles. We need mobility. We need just... I've been, I've been way too, like, lacking on the production of units. Am I on a top? I don't... 7,000. Oh, that bug wasn't fixed. Hold on. Spending money in tactical pause is not updating your money until you leave tactical pause. Yeah, here it is. Let me move that to the top of the list because that's really bad. That, that, that's really, it makes you, oh shit.
You need to get repairing. And then those walls need to be upgraded to tier 2. Like, and I gotta get that repeater back online. Yo, can you get off my stuff? Sir? Sir? Get out of here. No one likes you. Let's go ahead and let's drop an ammo thing here. And then the the yeah it yeah it, it left, it's gone. That's okay. I'm waiting for my other Ajaxes to appear so I can just go in there and just ride on them anyway. I need the 50 cal so I can get to stay in fire because using up this this uh this toe on standard infected is just not cost efficient. Oh, they're going around because they want to use the road. That's right. All right, boys. We need to clear out that right sector. Go, go, gadget, clear it out. All right, let's see what we got here. Let's get little Timmy out of the endangered area and let's build a thing there and then we need to get another repeater up. I can't because I'm broke. Damn it! What are you doing down there? Bastard. I'll come for you next, don't you worry. Let's just do some cleanup over here at those tunnels and then I'm going to go on the offensive and get a Black Hawk. Okay. Oh shit. I knew I should have built defenses over there. Alright, let's uh we need to increase the money I have coming in. Let's see. Let's get that little bird in the air. And let's go grab let's go build some back cap points. Cause I'm tired of being broke right now. We're just gonna run around the map and just cap some points to give me some money. So I know the sock here, so let's go ahead and let's grab that one. And then have we pacified thy zone? Let's drop you another ammo box. Drop is on its and way. then let's see, where are the other Ajaxes that I built? Are they back here at home? Oh yeah, that's right. I doubled them back. I know the Leviathan headed up north to basically build some more tunnels. But what I want to do is I'm going to queue up some attack moves for the uh, Ajaxes because I want them to scan the entirety of the military base and see if they can find any stragglers, anyone that's hiding. And then you need to stop missing. Like, you're wasting my ammo. Yes, right there. Hit it, please. And then I'll just move him back after he destroys it. How much ammo is on there still? Decent amount, I think. Alright, so now go back over here. Get your ammo. How are the Ajaxes doing? They're doing their attack move. You're going to actually break off and you're going to attack. You're going to check this vector. Just to make sure there's no surprises waiting. Am I paused? Oh, I must have, I must have screwed it up. Oh, come on. Just kill him. You, retast. Kite his ass. You're focusing on him. They're focusing on the ads. Focus on the ads, people. Protect your brethren. I need another. Team is under attack. I'm out of money, shit. Okay, let's go ahead and let's uh, build that sock over here. Let's go ahead and let's land and let's get him out of the helicopter. I can afford to take my eyes off of them for a small period. Let's not get him out. I only want one engineer. That one can take off. You can build. And then you're heading to the next point. Pause again. Next sock is somewhere over here in this vicinity. There you are. Go. Wait, hold on. Did I select the wrong? Yeah, I selected the wrong unit, didn't I? 
Build the sock. I clicked the wrong unit. Go there. And then let's go back to the back row. Oh, okay. He's trying to get... Really? Bastard. Get out of... Th oh, my God. Is the Hummer in his mouth? Oh, the Hummer fell. He came up on the Hummer. The and it basically, like... Does that. That's crazy. Oh, he needs ammo. Confirmed. Supply drop inbound. I say it makes the game more manageable. You think it makes it too easy? Because like some people, like, they need the time to think. There's too much going on in this game sometimes, and some people just don't play the same way you do. And if you think it's cheap, just don't play it slow mo. Use the F2 B keybind, and just I mean, don't use tactical pause and use the F2 key to do slow mo. But I know that tactical pause was highly sought after. People have been asking for that for years. I spelled that wrong, but who cares? Definitely a system just can't. I wonder. Sometimes if you reload, it fixes it. And that means if something's being created dynamically, it's not being managed properly. We'll see if the frame rate goes up. Yeah, the frame rate went back up. So it's something that's being that's not being managed properly by us. I gotta, we gotta we have to hunt that down effectively. Your base is under attack. Oh shit! Destroy it! Destroy it now! Okay, and repair, and let's upgrade those walls. And then you need to be upgraded to... I'm going to put one to the sniper and one to the LMG. That's a pretty killer combination. And the sniper will effectively be like one-hitting people way outside the range of the LMG. So he'll he'll do his work. He'll put his job in. So it looks like that's good enough. Let me jump over to him. Actually, no. I'm going to jump over to him. I'm going to scroll in. No, I don't want to kill the civilian. I accidentally, like, ghost clicked on him. Okay. So another issue to, to document. This is a cross evac breaking down. One hour, 24 minutes. Got it. Okay, this, is what, this is basically what I do when I play test builds before I put them out on experimental or just any build. Unless I know it's super volatile and I put up a shit ton of warning, sometimes I'll put it out with like 20 to 30 minutes of play testing. But generally, I try and play every build for about one to two hours minimum. Let's send these boys to the motor pool. We need to build a motor pool and... Yeah, let's go ahead and let's put a motor pool over here. Yeah, it's in the way of where they're moving, so let's not restrict their flow of movement too badly. Because every time you build a structure, it just places down a um, an object that makes the cost more effective. Uh, more expensive, sorry. Um, yeah, that's that's the biggest thing, is that how I play the game is different than how everyone else plays the game. So it's figure, it's being able to make people customize the game to their limbs of what they find fun. If they find evacuation fun, let's give you enough tools to be dangerous with it. If they find all-out warfare fun, same thing. You know, if you want to do a hybrid or you, you're, you're kind of wanting to switch around at times, it's, it's up to you. And you can play it however you like, and the game just kind of evolves based on that. So that's one of the biggest things is that 
I'm really pretty excited for when we get like the more sophisticated AI and the driving and all that is that's going to really, really help like give more tactical options. Because I know that the vehicles can be very cumbersome right now when it comes to their interaction with the world and especially with, with ground units. Like, like I was talking about this in a... Hold on. Oh, it's that group. So when I teleported their, their settlement over here, their AI never got a call to move over. So they're scavenging and they're sending supplies home, but they don't realize they need to move home to the new area. So I wrote that down in the bug earlier because I was like, what are all those dots? But um, it was like something that basically I was talking to recently. Uh, I don't remember who it was. But basically, it's more so just making sure that we're giving people enough tools of their utility belt to basically in, 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 basically engage with the game in ways that they want to. Because again, like their entire play style is that I'll never play. I force myself to play as a playtest to the best of my ability, but realistically, I kind of like fall back on their criticism in terms of what they feel needs to be needed. Like, in my mind, evacuation was never going to be a thing. We said it for years. From 2020 to 2023, we were telling people to take a hike to do the evacuations, because that's not how I wanted to play the game at that point. And then you figure, over time of just listening to people, seeing what they have to say, and being more flexible, I started to see, like, okay, I can see where they're coming from, Let's make the change. Let's try it out. And we tried it. We did an early prototype like a year ago, towards the end of 2023. And then it was like, okay, this isn't that bad. It's actually pretty fun. So, let's, let's, so we implemented our first pass. And then over the course of a year, it's adapted to change. Like if you go back to YouTubers playing the early evacuations, like Spidercat and like Remy, it's not even the same system anymore. It's, it's night and day, the system. Like the game is a different game than what it was a year ago, six months ago, three months ago. Like, it's constantly adapting and changing. And, and for, I would argue for the better. Uh, based off of just generally like, hearing what people are saying that they want, and then just taking into consideration what we can actually do. Because again, people wanted this bus evacuation system a year ago, six months ago. We couldn't do it at the time. We were over over in Dayton with so many other systems and features that if we did it, it'd be even worse than the implementation that we did right now. Which you can see there are bugs because we're like one and a half programmers. Until we have the budget to hire more people, we have to work within our constraints of everyone having a day job and putting in the time that they can and so on and so forth. But you can see that, like, you know, I would argue we're pretty goddamn responsive when it comes to just fixing the bugs that we can, and we're transparent and honest about when there are bugs, and maybe we need help solving them in terms of what's causing the bug, or, you know, uh, we'll let people know it might be a while so we can get to that bug, because a visual cosmetic bug, like the Cerberus bug, where you deploy the mortar, we know about it, but we're not going to fix it yet. We're not going to fix it until we get to the, the new advanced vehicle AI, because the whole vehicle class has to be torn out and redone. So it's one of those things where it's a waste of time for us to fix. It's been earmarked and just be put to bed when we get to the vehicle AI as something on a checklist of like, did you check this? Does it ever happen anymore? Let's let the community see if they can break it. Can they break it? Great. Let's move on. It's dead. And it's one of those things where it's like it's on a list and it's just, we're just waiting until we have, so I give the go ahead to fix it. But there's no point. We'd be fixing it two times. So it's one of those things where it's like, Let's get the more bang for our buck in terms of time effectiveness. Um, because of our limited time. Of like, again, I mentioned this earlier. If you look up any RTS game, they have a minimum of a dozen programmers. A minimum. It's unheard of to have two programmers in an RTS game. Of this scope. So it's one of those things where it's like, we have to kind of really, really, really scrutinize when we do, when we do invest our time into something. And how much we do. Which goes back into the previous argument of the the the, tr the, the triangle is what I call it, the the, in, the community triangle of performance, bug fixes, features. 
Uh, so someone, uh, do you yourself like the game you created? If I didn't like it, I wouldn't be playing it right now. I wouldn't be working on the game. It's one of those things where it's like, after playing They Are Billions, I was like, I don't like I don't like Ste I don't, steampunk, iron punk, whatever that game was. I love the game. The game is phenomenal. But I was thinking to myself, why isn't there a modern version? Why isn't there a modern take on this? That's like I that's like They Are Billions, but it's modern military. And I got really mad, but it didn't exist. Played prototype one day, and was like, shit, I'm just gonna make it. <laughs> Like, literally, that's what it came down to. Well, I was like, I played the Arab Billions, and then I was playing Prototype shortly after that, and I was like, why don't we just make our own? Make our own? And that's just how the game came about. It was literally just as simple as that. It's like, it doesn't exist, I'm going to make it. Because that's the kind of game that I would want to play. And the same thing for whatever future games we make. There are going to be games that are just going to be like, why doesn't this game exist anymore? Why do people not make these kind of games anymore? Like, this is boring. Like, why does SOCOM not exist? Why does games like Freedom Fighters not exist? Why do games like Prototype not exist? Like, that kind of stuff. Where it's like, they don't market... Like, big companies don't see a value in making those games anymore because they all want to do is make, like, these weird live service over-the-top games. So it's one of those things where it's like, there's a place for those games, but there's also a place of, like, why people play older games more than they play the modern games. Like, that video that Asmongold did recently, where, like, old games are played more prevalently than the newer games in some cases, because people are more nostalgic, I guess you can say, about the older times of gaming. Like, you know, those, like, when games were, like, there were so many features and mechanics and systems, and, you know, yeah, it was just... It was a golden age, almost. Let's see. What am I missing? So definitely the performance did get better when I save and reloaded. So that's a, that's a cause for concern in terms of basically something we're not managing. The evacuation system is running pretty decently. I've evacuated 5,000 people in the course of four days. I could have did a hell of a better job during evacuations, honestly. Like, realistically, there are areas that are just metas. There are areas where you can basically... Like, this area is a meta. Going over here, I should have cleared out all these trees, and I should have just built the mecca of evacuation zones right here. And then I should have built... I should have sent some engineers over and built the mecca of evacuations here, and then had half the island evacuating there, and then half the island evacuating here, in slow-mo, a tactical pause, then focused on the combat. But I, I wasn't playing this strategically enough. It's one of those things where it's like, that's where, that's where I feel a tactical pause gets its value from. In situations like this, where it's easy to be overdated with the sheer amount of things in the game that you have to do in one moment. Because there is a lot. As a game director... You are juggling a lot of things. If you're, see, I think that's where the, the misunderstanding comes from people that play the game and they play it from the standpoint of more combat oriented and not like inter interacting with all the systems. You have a crow's flag next to the second bridge. Oh, this. Let me go and spy on him and see what he's doing. So I think that's where the beauty of basically having a tactical pause to reinforce it is like when you're interacting with every system, the evacuation, the management, combat, uh, upgrading, de building defenses, that's when the defense, defense pause is invaluable. But if you're only engaging with like a quarter or half, then I think that's when people are like, you don't need it. Or maybe I'm wrong. But that's what I feel like is where the misunderstanding comes from. Because, again, people play certain ways and they don't really understand the, like, the other ways and how over and how over, over and, you know, overwhelming they can be. And, again, that will be mitigated when we add co-op. Because when you have co-op, it'll be like, hey, you're in charge of defense. You're in charge of attack. 
you're in charge of civilian evacuation, and that fourth guy is in charge of maybe logistics. You know, so they're the ones that are basically supplying everyone, making sure power is available, you know, making sure that if there's redundancies for power, you know, like that kind of stuff. So, obviously, you won't really need a tactical pause, because I feel like a tactical pause in a co-op game is going to annoy people more so, because then everyone has to agree. And realistically, the host will just pause without asking anyone, and then that could get annoying. So it's one of those things where it's like you might get some, some groups where like they have to agree, we're not going to pause, and... This is your job. Do your job. And basically then, if there's an emergency, then everyone has to kind of agree to pause. That's at least what we do in Parkitect. Where me and Michael or Derv are playing a part, we have to all agree consecutively, we're going to pause. We're going to go in the fast forward mode. Uh, you know, X, Y, and Z. And I think that's kind of how it's going to gravitate towards when we get to that point. So let me do a drive-by on these birds and see if I can figure out what they're doing. I think they're trying to build a nest. Yeah, they're, they're building a nest. They're multiplying. Burn them! And that's another thing that you're going to notice, is that we're going to be improving the balance of, like, countering birds and other stuff via units. There's going to be a substantial improvement in terms of, like, or, like how systems are, like, calculated. Because Michael has recently gotten access to a lot more control when it comes to, like, how we determine those things. That was something else that I've been working on behind the scenes to basically just kind of flesh out those systems so he has more to work with, especially for when we get to more complicated com- Oh, shit! No? Alright. Another perfect example of where the tactical pause is so useful. No! Little Timmy! Destroy it! Burn it! Come on! Fuck, 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 fuck! I should have built more men. I should have sent more men. <laughs> okay, so... Alright, you wanna play like that, little birdies? We're gonna play. And you're not gonna like it. So once I bring out the heavies with their spread, and their penetration, they're going to wreck you. And realistically, let's get another little bird. And we need to start launching attacks into the island. Door gunners are more of a restriction on... It's one of those things that we've, we've, we've we applied that rule ourselves. We intentionally don't allow that because that would increase the amount of animations we have to do per unit. Myself and Michael were just talking about that today. Where it's like, if we had more resources and we had more money to hire more animators, then sure. But as it stands right now, everything's going to be kept automated. Everything's going to be kept either the crows or some kind of automated platform. Because that's what they're doing right now to minimize troop and like, like, you know, fatalities. But... Beyond that, it's like it comes down to more of a, it's a, it's a, it's a conscious choice to limit the scope of how much overhead we have on the project. Because we only have one animator. So it's one of those things where like we have to work within the constraints of what is realistic. And if we added that to every unit in the game that could have it in real life, it would be a lot. It would be a lot of overhead. And it's one of those things where like we're not against going back and doing it in the future. Or like maybe if we add variations of the Black Hawk, or we add variations of the little bird, that, like the little bird, the Black Hawk that's manned. But for right now, conceivably, to keep it under control, it's going to stay automatic. It's going to stay an automated platform like GTA, like Prototype, and a lot other than the genre. Where they don't, they they did that as a conscious decision to make it simpler and easier to, you know, to use, to to maintain, to animate, to put new units into the game. Um, and then it also adds another layer of combat, because can that gunner die? What kills that gunner? How do you replace that gunner when he dies? That kind of thing, like in Company Heroes. So it's one of those things where we didn't want to, we didn't want to, we didn't want to open that can of worms just yet. Who is that? Who are you? How? He must have died on the little bird, and then the ragdolls. That's cute. 
Now there's that bird escaping up north. Hunt him down and destroy him. He's trying to kill those civilians. What a dick. Let's do a sweep pass to make sure I didn't miss any. Actually, no. This is not the best way of doing this. Realistically, you want to build a drone helicopter because it has tripled the range of any other unit in the game. And then basically send that out as you're basically, you're, you know, to, to see if anyone's building behind you. I love hard work. Okay, so let's build another repeater. And then I'm going to earmark that for Monday. And this is, sorry, 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 not Monday. Today is Monday. No, it's Tuesday. So let's go ahead and let's write down a car. And then we're going to put down a section for triple range of repeaters. Done. I'm going to go and actually restrict her. And I'm going to go and I'm going to do that myself after I finish this live stream. I'm not even going to task that to someone. Done. That is an excellent question, Wolfie. Uh, I'm trying to think about that because you figure there's been some debate in terms of what I think the best time of doing that is. I believe that the best time to do that would be when are when we are working on the DNA stuff. So we have the circuit doctrine card coming up, and then after that, there's about a week allocated, weekish allocated, to basically looking at the DNA research and adding a new progression tree for how we handle unlocking, uh, you know, items for like the DNA scanner, the hand scanner are going to be moved under that. There's going to be uh, infection resistance stuff, like a bunch of like uh, oxygen times of how efficient your filters are when you're going to enter gas zones, like that kind of stuff. Where when we add more of an incentive to do DNA research, that'll be one of the first things we do is that Dimitri will go and he'll prototype up a deployable uh, trailer as attached to the Atlas base that you would take. Like, I'll give you guys a little run around because a lot of people don't know what I'm talking about. So take this zone here, peak point. So let's say you want to not deal with essentially like having to run in here with a scientist and play uh, find Waldo or whack-a-mole for like granting all the DNA samples. You could theoretically move in with a contagion of soldiers, set up right here, clear out this gas tower, set up a blockade, set up some defenses, set up a tower. So I set up this DNA uh, atlas, and it would passively generate DNA based on the severity of the infection of that zone. So because this is an extreme, it would generate you the highest amount of DNA points per tick. Uh, now, because a couple things we still have to figure out is how do you have to get to a certain central point in the center of the zone? Like we set dynamic hot spots, so you can't just like a base building is being damaged. So you can't just like go right here. Okay, I'm in the zone setup. So it'd be like we have to figure out like how close you have to get into the center of the zone. So we'll probably mark like a center right right here, and then it would be the closer you get to that center point, that would give you a multiplier of how quickly you get DNA. So it'd be severity, close how close you are to the actual like center of the zone, and then you farm. But what that will do is that will trigger all the infected in that zone and adjacent zones to becoming to become agitated. And now it becomes a horde defense mission where they're going to send everything they have. Doesn't matter if you have other warfare going on, you're picking and prodding, if Chelsea is pissing off other dynamic civilian groups, they're going to send everything they have to get you to leave that zone. So it's going to become a massive war. Where, like, if you're not prepared, like, you're going to get overwhelmed in seconds. Because Leviathans will come. They'll summon Juggernauts. They'll send every standard infected, every spitter, every blow-up guy they have to that location. And if you set up multiple, they'll split them. And uh, the, uh, there's a caveat, is you have to get that, you have to get that truck now back to your medical center. 
So it's not going to be like those DNA points are immediately deducted to your DNA. That's too easy. That's easy. So it would be where basically you set up a truck here and you protect it. And then now you have to get a Chinook in, lift it. And then maybe you're just going to sacrifice your units. Maybe you're, maybe it's a, a situation where you're like, you set up a coin, you set up your defenses, you farm maybe like 100 DNA, 200 DNA, and you make the strategic choice at the end of the day. You're all going to die. I'm going to blow the bridge. We're going to set a Chinook in just enough to grab the Atlas and bring it back to my base. Maybe evacuate some people in some vehicles, but you're going to leave them all to die. And that's the thing, though, is I want to kind of get the game to that point where well, you have to make these very, like, fucked up, like, very tactical decisions of, like, can I, do I have to sacrifice these men because you figure they're going to stay there to hold out so I can get this high-value target out? Whether it be when we add in the dynamic world quest or when we add in the dynamic, you know, this, this DNA farming system. You know, it's kind of in that direction of almost creating dynamic missions that you dictate when they start. And you dictate the criteria of, like, how you're going to do all that. So that's the idea behind the DNA thing. And I can't wait till we get that in there because that's going to interject a lot of, like, dynamism to the game in terms of, like, when, you know, when you, when you like, how you do it. Because, like, even I don't like the DNA scanner collecting thing. It's like it's good for like it's almost like that piece of candy meme from like Family Guy if you know what I'm talking about. It's like oh piece of candy, oh piece of candy, because you have that one scientist just running around just kind of collecting. And it's okay in moderation, but it's like a system that hasn't grown, hasn't adapted with the rest of the game, where it's like. I'm, you'll see this throughout development where it's like we'll have legacy content and legacy things where it's like the hand scanner like the infection tower where they're good ideas on paper but they need more time dedicated to them to expand on it to get more range to it so it's not as precise there's a word I guess you could say in terms of the execution. Like there's more range, there's more there's more ways of getting more value out of it, per se. Anyhow, where am I getting fucked? Nowhere. On. So let's go ahead, let's move these little birds over. It would appear that there's no real contagions going on here. So let me do this. I'm going to speed up evacuation because I'm playing this terribly. So please, don't, the people at home, don't quote me on my efficiency in transportation right now. Because realistically, I should have built a crap ton of these transportation garages all over here to just kind of get them out. And I didn't even set enough points. Because, I mean, you have a limit of 12. Why wouldn't you use a limit of 12? Like, why would you not... Because you, know, you could destroy these at any time. So it's one of those things where it's like, let me just show a mass transit, like a mass exodus thing. Because we have a new... We're, we're calling this series of updates. This, we're theming this category of updates but before the doctrine stuff of Exodus. So we're calling the um, Staffius Protocol Exodus, where the idea is that like we're going to have a trailer and a bunch of like promotional material in the next couple of weeks and a new trailer that is going to earmark the section before the Cirque and the Doctrine stuff, Staffius Protocol Exodus. And then we'll have another keyword or theme to uh, associate uh, the Circuit Doctrine stuff, where it's going to be Escalation or like Vanguard. Is what we're thinking. Like Cepheus Protocol Vanguard, Cepheus Protocol Escalation, where it's like we're we're giving the circuit more tools. So the idea is we're gonna like start doing what No Man's Sky does, where instead of just having a number, there's an actual like code name associated with it. We definitely have to get that quality of life change in tonight, of like being able to see where your active evacuation point is, because I feel like that would help so much. 
and then get that 3D text in. Because if we had the 3D text in right now here, you could be able to look at it, and it would tell you, currently evacuating two. Currently evacuating two. Not evacuating. Like, so you could know immediately the name, what's going on in the zone, what groups are in play. And if you don't, if people don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about those 3D display text that's updated dynamically in the world when you zoom out to a certain height. So at a quick glance, you'll know what tactical, what decisions need to be made. Anyhow, point hill. Got to remember that. So Grissom Military Barracks, what are we doing? Point Hill. Okay, that is being evacuated. For some reason, I thought it wasn't. Bradlock Parkway. What are we doing? Bradlock Parkway. Point Hill. Okay, that is being evacuated. Treasure Island Dockyard. Point Hill. And then Grillad Military Barracks. Point Hill. And then the last one. The fuck? Birds. Damn. Well, you got a new mission, boys. Where are those where are those helicopter supports? Where 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 am I? Get in that car, you're going in. You're in support. And this will be a good test for gas consumption. Because Michael keeps upping the gas consumption, and it never feels right for the uh, Ajaxes. Like, they need to be able to go at least 30 minutes in game. Like, constant moving. Like, I, gas will be a thing, but it's like, not this much. But you can see right now, I've already used a centimeter of gas. Like, what the f Hold on. Relook. I'm writing this down right now. That ain't, that ain't flying. Or relook at gas consumption of all ground based vehicles that's annoying like you figure right now it should be at barely a centimeter of usage like i wonder if it's going to be halfway by the time i get there because that means that you can't even go from one point of treasure island you can barely go from one side of treasure island to the other and then now you can see my bus fleet is operating it's like literally going around, grabbing people, curling up 128. Now, now we're about to basically over my system of evacuation. Now, this is when, it, when the evacuation system needs to not be breaking. And we need to have the dual helipad system. Because then they're going to, now the clog is going to be here. And you can see already, you're like, let's see, what do we got here? Yeah, there's, there's no one waiting. So now when all those buses come down, drop off here, then all those Chinooks should be filled in seconds. The next Chinook should be filled in seconds. The Chinook after those should be filled in seconds. And you're going to have a massive backlog. So then that would be when you'd want to build more holding bays. You'd, you would basically flip-flop between the small holding bay that, we're gonna, that we're, we have in, that will be resized, and the large holding bay, that's going to fit 100 people. And then that way you get more range. And you can see right now, we did do a lot of tweaks for them to stay on the roads. But they still do some stupid stuff like this. I feel like that's not going to be solved until we can redo the vehicle AI. Because you figure that is the vehicle AI. Where it's like, so people that are reporting like the vehicle is driving through water, we've already, I feel like we've already done the, the extent of what we could do until we get to the point of basically just redoing them. Like, we're going to rewrite the whole AI class for vehicles. We're going to rewrite the whole vehicle class. We're going to be starting over from zero to basically use all the things that we've learned over the course of 
five years of development, because technically the game was in development for about two years before our early access release, and essentially fixed the problem, either using Chaos Vehicles or doing it ourselves. But whatever it is, it needs to be done and fixed. And mind you, there will always still be bugs and issues, because you play Company Heroes, you play uh, Red Dragon, you play any modern game, Arma, the vehicles will screw up at times. The vehicles will crash into each other. The vehicles will make stupid decisions. But it's about getting that down to like a 10% chance, I would argue, instead of 90, 80% like right now, they do stupid stuff. It's like maybe maybe 80 or 70 percent vehicles do stupid stuff, but 30, 30, 30 to 40 percent are efficient. I would argue. Like you can see right now, those helicopters are packed. But definitely, there's some ideas going on because this one's not. I'm gonna save this file. I've got one hour and 57 minutes. Got it. Oh, and people that don't know this, you can do this. You can actually uh, control hotkey the carrier to your groups. Uh, we're going to be fixing that. Well, not really fixing it, but we're going to be applying the aircraft carrier by default to group one as a small quality of life change going into tonight. When people realize that you can do this or this, and then, you know, you can do whatever you want. Maybe you don't want it in a group. Maybe you want it in a group. And those people don't realize you can assign the carrier to a group, but it's not, it's one of those things that's not obvious. Uh, what's people chat asking? How many miles is Treasure Island supported to be? I don't know what that means. You mean the, what's the scale of the island in relation to the real world version of Treasure Island? Yeah, I burned half a tank getting here. That's total bull. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be changing that. Anyway, let's go blow some stuff up. Because odds are we need to pacify this island before they become a problem. Increase the range of ship weapons. Which ones and why? What are you trying to use it for? So your concern with the ship weapons is that there's too much micro? If I'm understanding correctly? Half of no return, boys. Pacify, move in. That's a good save file. And then let's do a quick test. Come on. There was a lot going on in that game. That's probably why it had that jump. Yeah, so the performance did not improve. Perfect. That's exactly what I need. Is what it doesn't fix. So then that way we can run a, a profile tool and figure out where our code is getting a little too expensive. Now, why are they all retreating up there is the question. That's interesting. Let's get a little bird overhead. Actually, no. I built a scout drone. Let's make him useful. Let's figure out what they're doing. If I had a guess from where I'm building, where that island is, it's about probably a mile, if I were to guesstimate. But again, it's like 
It's video games versus real world. Or so you figure like the entire so let me just pause for a second. So like give me a rundown, right? When we when we switch to 5.4, maybe 5.5 is at that point, we have to add the golden the Oakland Gold Gate the Oakland Bay the Oakland Bay Bridge goes right through here. Where my mouse is. This island gets deleted. That island gets deleted. You gain a landmass five times the size of all of this over here. It's going to be somewhere over here, roughly. San Francisco North. At most, you're looking at probably four to five miles. So the idea is that, like, it's never going to have... You would never have to refuel your car if we did the real version of 200 miles. Because even when we add the new province, it wouldn't be enough. So that's why I'm like, I get you. But we're not going to go full realism here. Now let me just do a little spot. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give up Angel Eye. Let can have it. Like, I'll come and I'll burn them all soon. So let's see what we got here. The Juggernaut despawned. We have some standard infected loitering on the pier. This would be funny if I drove the aircraft carrier over here. If I docked him here, he would go full auto on everyone in this area. But it would take too long to do that. Because he would start aggroing people away from this area. So we're going to just go in on them. And this is one of the things that basically is really annoying about vehicles that I know. And that we've earmarked it for improvement when we use advanced vehicle AI. Is there needs to be kind of some kind of staggered movement where vehicles don't move in front of the infantry. The vehicles... The infantry... The vehicles move... And then the infantry form up around the vehicles. And we talked about this previously on Discord in a... Uh, I just sat down with people in a room one day. And it's like every vehicle needs to have invisible points around it. And what the infantry would do is that when you give a move order like this, with this collection, they would stay in close as close proximity as possible to those preset points, i.e. they're protecting the Hummer. It's more like a convoy. And the idea would be is that if you issue a move order together, they're now together. They're going to they're going to occupy as many points as they can in the vehicle. So if I were to do this, they would just start randomly filling in those points on these Humvees. And then the Humvees would form a, uh, a formation that would give each unit based off of those points and how big the vehicle is, enough distance bias to essentially to minimize clipping and overlapping. Now, I'm not going to guarantee that there's not going to be no clipping and overlapping. That's just not possible. You know, that's going to happen. It happens in armor. It happens in company heroes. Units are going to intersect at times. Our game is too complicated to, to, to go out on a uh, thing that we're going to fix that completely. But it should resolve... I would argue 70 to 80 percent of those cases where you get that cluster that group and then what would happen is that the humvees will set their max speed to that of the slowest unit in the formation so let's say for instance you got a heavy that has a minigun dynamically when you when you issue a move order at this whole selection everyone would ramp their speed to the speed of that minigun guy no matter where he is in the formation if he's in the select move order, everyone's going to move at the same speed. They're going to occupy points. Now, the idea is, is once every vehicle would have probably about 8 to 12 points. Once those 8 to 12 points are occupied based off of the size of the vehicle, you would then have the, the rest of the units fall behind the last vehicle and start doing a column, a two by two by two column, where it's like boom, 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 forever. So however long your move order is. But if you don't have vehicles that facilitate it, you don't want to just additively just push them left and right and forward. At that point, have them fall in behind and make a long column. So again, occupy the points around the vehicles. Once those points are filled, dynamically start building a column behind. We're not going to get super crazy in terms of like every one of these formations is going to have their own dynamic one. Ideally, what we're going to do to keep it controllable and manageable and we can 
we can easily improve the quality of it is that if you give a long move order for vehicles and infantry, they're gonna they're gonna fall back on a staggered column every single time, and we'll do we'll allow formations when they're infantry, but I don't know if we're gonna be able to figure out from. I don't know if we're going to be able to figure out formations for ground vehicles because of the complication of the floor and how big they are. So that one, don't, I'm not sure about. But at the very least, if you give a move order like this, they're all going to go on the staggered column no matter what you select. They're going to fill in the vehicle spots. They're going to fill in the spots behind you. And now you have a defensive net around your vehicles and around your infantry, well, your, your supplemental infantry in the back. And I'm sure we'll have some kind of like quality of life system, a medic system. That would effectively, when units start to die that are around these units, the units in the back would run up and take up the position. Well, that way you don't have to reissue the move order for them to retroactively take the position. Like, well, you know, issue another move order. But anyhow, let's get on with it. Away team is under attack. Oh shit. Should have bought a radio, man. This is gonna be painful. What if I tell? You know what to do. You guys know especially what to do. Let's get those X's going. Unloaded them. Are they bugged out? Don't throw a rock, bro. No! No, put the rock down! Shit. They're blending in. Sir, put the rock down. It really hurts when you throw that when my units are clustered together. That wasn't as bad as it could have been. Yeah, they're definitely bugged out. Let's drop some ammo. Your ammo is being dropped. That's weird. Let me save that. And then we can look at what they were thinking and solve that. I don't have to attach these save files. Two hours and three minutes. Got it. Moving on. You shall die now. Oh. The cur oh, no, I thought the curvature of the hill was going to block that toe shot, but it didn't. And my right flank is being overwhelmed. Let's reposition. I'll push the left flank onto the hill. We have to take the high ground, like Anakin said. Or like Obi Wan said. Whoever has the high ground always wins, am I right? The other guy gets cut in half. I mean, it didn't work in their case, but they didn't have guns, so I found them. Thermal was removed because we couldn't figure out a way of balancing it. It was too broken. It was like a map hack. Like, literally, there was no way of scaling up the map, increasing the amount of infected, increasing the amount of AI, and keeping thermal. It was just never going to work. Because you could see anyone everywhere and all the time with the thermal. And it made it to where we couldn't even fake things. At the moment you turned on thermal, we'd have to unfake an entire world and then nuke your frame rate by spawning hundreds of people. It wasn't sustainable. We couldn't figure out a way of keeping it. I mean, because you guys can already see right now we have performance issues and there's no thermal. Imagine how bad it would be if we left the thermal in. It was nice. It looked sexy. I loved it back in the day. I'm sure some people archive the old legacy builds so they can play thermal. But when you're a game developer, you have, to, you have to weigh the reality of the situation. Even if people are going to get mad over it, it's the only way of progressing in development is to make the hard decisions sometimes like that. Where it's like, it'd be nice to have it, but te te technically it is not feasible. Based off of the engine and based off of the, the scope and the resources and a bunch of other factors.
I never get to use the 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 the, the, um, the flare. I love the flare. Oh shit. That unit shoots an AOE, and it's very painful for my units when they get hit, because it can take out a whole squad in seconds. Yes, thank you. Delete that unit. And right, let's drop another ammo box down for you. Have you guys finished pacifying that dock? Well, you need to move down the dock and destroy that. Search and destroy, boys. Can we expedite this, please? Do your job. Oh, it's gone. Okay. Alright, so we need to swing around. And we need to check for remnants. I don't like surprises. And actually, you guys can actually need to join... Yeah, you need to join the fucking... The dock push, boys. No, they don't need help. Not attack. Move, 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 move. They definitely need the goddamn help. But we have a huge goddamn battle going on that dock. Oh, I shouldn't. Have, no, I, I didn't need. To, that's right. Let you know they're fast enough to where they can they can drive right through. Let's push the advantage because if they touch someone, they'll they'll insta give them. At least they're supposed to, and insta kill them. Oh my God! Look at that gas! I can't even get them back home. That is pitiful. The amount of gas that they have. It's written down. Push the line! Oh, that's annoying. Some of the collision in this area needs to be double checked. I'm gonna earmark that for a level nine to check later. Sentinel North Pipeway collision is invasive when having combat and trying to zoom into the docks. Got it. You know, I feel like playing in first person. I mean third. I lied. Oh my god! Yeah, I definitely gotta fix that one bug. Oh, you're out of ML. Give me ML. Thank you! Definitely having some performance regression. I can jump on them. Oh Jesus, they can't even get me up here anymore. But they have no ability to climb. We definitely gotta remove that. When we have the chance to clean up the operator, we definitely need to improve the hits the um we gotta do that Call of Duty battlefield thing, but a little bit better. Or it has like the hit registration or it tells you like if you kill them or if you hurt them. It's not very useful. Let's um let's push it up. Oh man, the frames, where has thou have gone? Oh yeah, this is the bug that Michael throws to fix. Is that the crouch animations are getting worked on tomorrow for that. And then we improve the the shoulder switching so the hands don't break and that actually uh, fixing it for the operator helped us improve it for everyone else by basically having um, a really, really nice, very, very nice cleanup for our IK and... What? Where was that? Who dares incur in my land? Oh, you again. I swear they really like just showing up in that random area. I mean, I have enough money now, so it doesn't really matter. I mean, you're just a temporary inconvenience at this point, buddy. I'm gonna show you the way of the death. But you can see definitely the buses are still running. They're still doing their job. They're trying to empty the entirety of this entire this entire zone. 
So they'll just go and they'll just do their job. And then they generate you money. Because every civilian that you activate is generating you money. Every sock that lands generates you money. Every special infected you gen- you you, ev- you kill generates you money. So like if you're really on top of it and you're doing every way of playing the game, and boy, you can you can really, really min max the game in terms of efficiency. Now give me a second, I'll look at what you guys have been typing in chat. I need to uh, put down a love put down a Leviathan that's just rude. Oh, I still have nine seconds. I can look at what you guys are saying. Uh, let me look up something. That's weird. Our C5 Galaxy can only fit a 73 people. Why did we find documented examples in California where they were transporting up to 128 on the Chinooks? And the C5 Galaxy is like... Oh, it looks large, but you have that fuselage in the center. And realistically, that's only slight... Well, that's wider. And I guess if you modify the C5 Galaxy, you could basically have it to where it could support, like... I don't know. Let me think about the C5 Galaxy thing. Hold on. Let me, blow, let me throw this away. One second. Ah! Oh. Come here, darling. Ah! Oh. I still don't want to make her appeal. If she's not in every stream, it's a with a crime against humanity. Let's go ahead and let's check that area out. Let's see if that Leviathan decided to go somewhere else. Azula! Honey bun! Oh, you're licking me too much. I gotta play. You're gonna go back on the floor if it'll stop licking me. There we go. Alright, well she said hello. Executive Assistant Azula. Oh, that's a problem. Yeah, we're gonna have to double that range of the repeaters. It's almost like playing whack-a-mole at times, and it's not... It's not the intentionality and gameplay that I want. Like, the Leviathan needs some more tweaking and some finessing here and there. To kind of get him to the point where he's not as frustrating. Because he, he, I, I can see why people turn him off. He's not being removed. We're going to fix him. He's very central to the game's campaign as well in terms of our lore. It just Because people don't know the lore and how the Pangu virus works and a bunch of other things. Some people like, and I think people were talking about this in general chat a couple days ago. But they were like, it doesn't make sense. And it's like, Supply drop is on its how do you guys know the story we haven't released yet? So it's one of those things where it's like, it makes sense. It just people want to play a more traditional Resident Evil, which is why we allow people to turn it off at times. Well, we allow them to turn them off regardless. But it's one of those things where it's like uh, we need to kind of like fix him. But he's he's not as much he's not as frustrating. Not as frustrating. And I, there's some changes I need to I need to basically play against him a little bit more and write down some changes that need to happen. It's often brainstorming it. And then let me go ahead and send these babies. Can those guys even get home? Or am I going to have to come in and bring in a... You bastard. Destroy him. (laughs) 
Yeah, I love that drive in physics. Come on, keep it moving. Your away team Idiot. Is under attack. Let's keep him looking. He's keep his AI not knowing what to do. Oh damn, he figured it out. No, actually, I was hoping he wouldn't spit. I mean, they need to spit the little guys out. If he doesn't spit the little guys out, this is this is this is a uh, this is acceptable. Away team is under attack. Now he's gonna run, bastard. Come back, bro. I want to say hello. My Humvees want to hug you. Bye bye. That's a new one. I've seen the fly. I've seen the flying Gregs. I've never seen the the ghosting Gregs. So whatever was causing that frame rate drip is now gone. I wonder if it was the Leviathan. I know some people have been saying that mass Leviathan sometimes can cause frame rate dips. I'm going to write that down as an investigation note. I'll put that under limbo. We need to find some time to look into that. Levies cause performance issues when above two on the open. World Master after a few minutes of being in game. I just want me to find dinner. I need to cook dinner. So there's an idle gas consumption, and then there's a moving gas consumption. And then it doesn't consume anything when you turn off the engine. So by default, Tarkin, the, gar the, the cars do not turn their engine off by default. You have to turn the cars' as, you have to turn the cars' as engine off manually. So the idle rate of cars shouldn't be a problem. I I'm pretty sure that's low enough. If it's not, well, you have to let us know. But I was under the impression. Yeah, now I'm just stuck with these cars. There's no way I'm getting these back home. This one's out of gas. This one's going to be out of gas in seconds. Yeah, I'm going to just... Damn it. I'm just going to, after this stream, I'm, before I even cook the uh, pre-build for you guys on on uh, Discord, I'm going to make some changes to the, 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 the repeater thing. I'm going to make some changes to the... Um, the gas consumption on every goddamn vehicle. Striker, Ajax, JLTV, every vehicle. And I'm just going to basically, I'm going to nullify their consumption of gas by 75%. 75% to 80%, basically, at this point. And then I'm going to cook another build and play it for another two hours tomorrow and see if that's enough. Because this is just cumbersome. Like, I understand... If those units were in active combat, I had gone back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But this is just one go, and now I'm, I have to get... Your oh, shit. Run, little Timmy! Oh, it was just one little... Okay, it was just one. I thought it was multiple. How are we doing on evacuation? Are we making a dinosaur chunk? Decently. I mean, Angel Island is there at this point. And... I'm going to find where you're coming from, you little bastards. So this is when the little, this is when the Apache is perfect. I'm just going to build some Apaches and they're going to be my SWAT team. Damn it. I need a couple more doctrine points. I need like two more doctrine points because I'm just going to build like two or three Apaches. And then basically they become my anti-Greg team. Like whenever Greg re rears his ugly head, they just come in and they're like, oh, hey, how's it going? You're dead. The end. So, and then realistically, I need to get an engineer out there. So let's grab you. And let's get, that's just way too small. I feel like it should be 
this, this, that. It should be the size of this to here. Here to here. Here to here. So like, uh, this is, I'm, you get the point. Like a, like a big circle. Like something like that is what I feel like. So like one repeater is enough to defend the silo. You know, one repeater is enough to basically close out like right here. It would, it would stop them from, from part to coming over here. And it would basically protect this area. So instead of having two repeaters here, it would be like there and there. There and there. So it would be a tripling. Yeah, but that's simple changing a number. That just means you got to build... Let's see, what's the power consumption of these right now? 50 power. And a generator, a generator generates 75 power. So that means that realistically you have to build two or three generators because I'd probably triple the power consumption. So that you'd click on this little one and it would be like... Yeah, so I, yeah, so I just do that. And that would just solve the problem. Because you figure realistically, um, it would be like 150 to 175 for the power. Triple the range. So that way it's not as cumbersome and babysitting. Because I think you're a terminal, a bunch of the people were talking about how frustrating the worms are. Because I want people to play with the worms. Because they, it's like the birds and the worms. We balance the entire game around, they're, it, it's, it, it's constituted on the idea that all of them are in the game. Otherwise, you run the huge issues of gameplay where it's just too easy. Like, people were sending me same files to make, like, trailer content with, like, a couple of weeks ago. And all of them had the birds and the juggernauts and the leviathans off. It was too easy. Like, it's just, like, I get they want a traditional, like, zombie experience. But in my mind, if you want to be challenged, if you want to basically, like, be at risk of dying, we need to fix the leviathan fix the repeaters, and then make it to where everyone wants to play with it. Not force them to do it, but fix the underlying problems with it so he's fun to fight against, you know? So it's one of those things where it's like, it's a failure in design. If you, if, in my mind, turning off the Juggernaut, turning off the Leviathan, turning off the other ones is like, they're not fun. It's a failure in design. We need to fix the underlying problem. Turning off the birds. You know, we need to provide enough counters and enough incentive to where like, okay, I can see why they have these on. And sure, there's always going to be people that turn them off because they want a chill game. Or maybe they don't want to play as, like, intense or whatever. There's always going to be that demographic. But I bet if I turned on it, if I had a statistic tool that would actually tell me how often people turn it on and off, because we don't have that in the game right now, we need to figure out a way of having a tool that tells us, like, how often people are changing settings and how often people die and all that. I bet, like... 60 to 70 percent of people are turning off the Leviathan and the Burr. It's and that just it sucks because then you can't lose because there's nothing else that can destroy the carrier. So it's one of those things where like we need to address that. Yeah, and Buzz, you have a, you're, you're you're completely right. And like you're it's it's, it's kind of like mitigating. Finding ways of like mitigating it of like people like the different play styles people have. Because again. Even I feel overwhelmed at time, and I program and work on the game. Come on, you dick! I just built that. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna show him the way of death, of destruction. That should be fast enough. And then the other thing I need to do is do I have enough? Yeah. All right, boys. You're the only surviving team because all my other guys ran out of gas. Go up north. And then you people. I need a fuel atlas. No, I don't. Warning. Away team is under attack. 
A unit has been lost. More cost effective and quicker just to kill them all. And when they come in, they're going to push north immediately. And then let's... This is a really bad tactical area, right? Yeah. But the problem is they're gonna make they're gonna clear that corner, they're gonna hit that intersection, and they're not gonna be able to get eyes on the target because of the way the AI works, where line of sight, blockage. So clearing stuff like that, knowing that a battle is about to begin, it just makes sense. Oh, he doesn't know he can't attack air units. How kawaii. I know because we programmed him. He has no idea what to do. He's defenseless against air units in all actuality. We're gonna have to fix that in the future though. Give him some kind of like, like potentially when we do the AI change, we could get a particle effect where he could spit like a projectile out. And that would basically like encase your little bird, maybe cause it to stall out, maybe cause it to black off. Because one of the biggest things is ma like macro, like when you play StarCraft, you gotta keep your units moving. You gotta engage abilities. It's all hands in, you know, kind of deal. So it's where like this kind of stuff where I keep them moving and he has to keep rotating. That kind of stuff needs to be improved upon. Where like if you're paying attention and you have your, you know, your hands in the game, you know, you can mitigate like him being able to spit at you. Because he'll spit in the direction you're going to go at. He'll spit and, and the way you were previously. And then it's like it, it rewards you for paying attention. So it's one of those things where, like, we need to make that change going into the future. And I'm going to argue that's something that we're going to basically work on when we do the infected AI changes on the on the 1.3 card. What? Are you? Oh, he can spit up in the air. That wasn't a spin in the air. That was a visual glove glitch. Sir, I need you to leave my garages alone. Those are really expensive. I spent all of $500 on it. They're trying to bug out of the AI. Because they're uh, the ones that are applying damage to him. Oh, look at that. The cavalry has arrived. What? 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 What just happened? I've never seen that happen before. I'm going to save this. Hold on. Two hours and 30 minutes. All right, got it. I don't know what's going That was wild! So when he went underground, something caused a collision issue where your units couldn't move in a fixed proximity, no one can target, until he re-emerged. Something that's being done with his capsule has blocked the ability of me to move over here. Well shit, retreat, you're gonna die. Let's, um... I, I mean, I have the save file now. So there's going to be an invisible object somewhere here that we're going to have to investigate going into tonight now. That moves to the top of the list. Can you at least go down here? Yeah, they can. <coughs> Destroy him! Your away team is under attack. Bro, move. Hey, come on. Don't miss again. You miss again, you're gonna die. Thank you. And what if I reinforce? Oh yeah, they came late like always. Fucking eating pretzels and bagels. Okay. I love hard work. Are you still walking? My god. Okay, we need to get a little bird for that guy. When he finishes building, we're gonna have a little bird like bury him around. Okay, so 
Angel Island's lost. They pretty much have given up pushing this bridge. Um, I'm going to start... I'm going to leave this team in the north because realistically, what I need to do is I need to have a defense team, which is going to be at 30 to 20 population needs to be your defense team. And then the rest could be basically your attack team that you go on the offensive with. Because you never know when... Well, Greg's going to screw you. And let's clear out his tunnel. All right. How are we doing? So there's 28,000 people on this zone. We're not able to evacuate them quick enough. But it doesn't help that there's some kind of logistical slowdown occurring. No. What is occurring? Alright, let me write that down for investigation. Where are all these people? Oh, they think that's right. We're not able to evacuate them quick enough, so they're going back into the homes. That needs to be gone. They need to go into the holding area. Hold on, we think about that. Yeah, I got an idea. So, they would have to be evacuated. Fivies would dropped off at the admin center. Would need to have to occupy a holding bay. They cannot re-enter nearby structures until the holdup in evacuations are resolved they will simply wait in the holding Okay. Because, yeah, we need to make that change. That's really annoying. Like, I don't know if you guys have been noticing, but as I play, they'll get dropped off here, and then there's a system that's like, what are you doing here? Why aren't you in a holding bay? And they'll be like, I don't know. And then instead of, like, having them wait or clog up the basically evacuation system, it adds even more problems because then they get spread out all over the province, and it's like, I have, like, there's 29,000 people in this zone, in Point Hill. Where are all of them? What, what, what's going on? There's a thousand people in this warehouse, you're telling me? No. You just need to... Like, realistically, it needs to be one of those things where, like, you just need to build more holding base. It's limited to that 30 pop. They, and then it, they're not going to bring more people until you're evacuating quick enough. So, you add the dual helicopters. And then you build, like, three to four holding base. So, you... You would need about three to four holding bays to hold the max amount of people, which is about 300 people is the max you can hold at any given time. And until that, those 300 people are like, you yeah, know, in and out, in and out, in and out, then it would it would basically bring more people. The people in the buses would be in a holding platform until they can, like, you know, to keep the flow going. Otherwise, you run into issues like this where now you have to reevacuate the zone that you're in. Weird. So... We need to make that change going into tonight. I'm going to put that at the top of the list after the bugs. Is we're going to have to look at the evacuation issue, fix this issue, add a dual evacuation, and then have it where they don't go into houses. They need to just, you know, go into a holding area and not re up the system. Because then it adds more insult to injury, because then you keep freeing up the system, keep freeing up the system, freeing up the system. And then every house in the entire province is full before you know it. I just realized. This helipad is not being used because it's outside the zone. A unit has Oops. Been killed. It has to be inside the border. Oops. You didn't see that. No one, no one saw that. I don't know how I, didn't miss that, how I missed that earlier. Uh. 
Oh, goodbye. Oh. He went to sleep on the floor. The only difference he turns into a... That one animation. Alright, so let's see. Is there anything else really to show? I think I have enough documentation going into tonight. I mean, there's going to be a pre-built. Definitely not going to experimental yet. Um... Now I need to assign, assign a, a priority list, take the same files that I have, upload them to the Trello cards that I created, and then from there basically start um, assigning priorities on top to bottom. Actually, I do, I'll do a color code system. Red, yellow, and green. Red being priority, yellow being moderate, green being low priority, and I'll just assign that to the cards so I don't have to add another like a prefect system to the card. Um, and then definitely there's some performance and considerations, but I think I have enough save files done for us to investigate that going into tonight and tomorrow. Because again, the goal is that to fix pretty much that list, the performance issues, then release it on experimental. And then uh, there's still some quality of life changes we need to do. We have to get that 3D text in there. It makes it really cumbersome. We need to have the icons here. So that way, like, Point Hill, if I if I look at Point Hill, like, if I'm uh, in this one, and I, like, look at Point Hill, there's an icon. Or at least it's, it's glowing. It's blue. It's green. So then that way, every point, every one of these things at the evacuation point is green or something. So then that way, I would know, like, oh, if you have, like, short-term memory or, like, you forget things easily, you could, like, go over here and then be, like, Point Hill's green. That's my evacuation point. Cool. Set. Uh, send the harbor. Cool. Uh, point point green. Click on that. And that way it would help the quality of life until people knowing, like, where your evac active evacuations are. I haven't decided if it's going to be a color outline or if it's going to be an icon. Maybe we'll do a green color outline for right now. And then go from there so it's not too invasive. Because this still requires, we still have to give this to a concept artist to, like, clean up. That would be cool. Also, if you got a small symbol to it. So you're saying a symbol and a color. Well, the color is already here. You can see there's already a color system here. Let me think about that. Why would you want a color there as well? That seems like kind of a little bit overdoing it. Could you explain a situation where you feel like that would be needed? Maybe I'm, not, maybe I'm misunderstanding why you want it. Because again, everyone plays the game differently. Like, could you explain it? But I feel like that's kind of like doing the same thing two times almost. That's why you have this drop down with the colors. What I would argue is that you go to say here, and then you're like, "What was my evacuation point?" Oh right, it's 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 a uh, it's blue or yellow or green, and then you click on that, and then you have an icon there, and then on top of that, you add the extra layer of having the 3D text over every zone. Theoretically, that's enough to get the job done. Then icing on the cake is adding a search feature up here, and then adding the collapse system, the collapsing. And the uh, expanding. Sorry, my dog was about to get tangled in a cord. Uh, the, yeah, the collapsing of the, and the, the you know the collapsing of the expansion system for each category. Boom. That should be everything that's needed to get this serviceable, to get it out. People are happy. It's on experimental for a couple of days. We hunt out. We hunt down the remaining bugs. Ship it over to normal. Start the advanced vehicle AI. So. Depending on, wait, let's see something. How many bugs do we have here? About two dozen. There's about two dozen bugs on this list. So, let's start by Lewis. Yeah, there's about two dozen bugs. Some of them are feature requests and suggestions too. So you figure we're definitely going to be filled tonight. We're going to be filled tomorrow. Hold on, let me look at the calendar. 
I'm going out of town for a funeral this weekend, so you guys aren't going to hear much from me. And this, if I'm not home, no one knows how to, no one does any updates, no one does any pings. So this weekend's going to be quiet. So. The last build will be Thursday before I get on the plane. The next build will be probably Monday. Yeah, because Monday I get on a plane, and then there's, there's not going to be any builds that weekend. So that'll give everyone, I'll leave a bunch of lists and a bunch of bugs or whatever. And then when I get back on the funeral on the 13th, then basically, uh, my dog, on the 13th, then I'd have another build. So what, we, what you guys missed on the 9th, 10th, and 11th. And potentially some stuff on the 12th. So then Monday and Tuesday would be a compilation, a pack of whatever else was missed, done while I was out, and we'll go from there. Um, Hellfire missiles? No. The current plan is to keep it currently to what the Hapachi has and to just improve his utilization. Like, what, we're, what we plan on doing for the little for the Hapachi is having it to where it has abilities. Well, you can right-click, and you can choose to have the Apache auto-fire its missiles, or selectively fire it. So, like, right here, there'd be a right-click button. You'd right-click it, and then it would toggle automatic engagement. And then if you left-click it, it'd have a circle like this, like in Command & Conquer Zero Hour, and then they'd go to a location where they could see that point, and they would shoot their missiles at that point. So that's something we're going to be doing. When we get to the circuit doctrine stuff, we're going to take it in bite-sized pieces. Ground vehicles, the driving AI, all the stuff that we've talked about previously. Then we're going to start the helicopters. We're going to improve their flying. We're going to basically look at their versatility and when they fail. And then we're going to do things like, where, you know, like abilities. Turning off certain weapons. Making it to where they're like a toggleable selection. So keep in mind, we're going to add another column. Because we don't have enough buttons for the amount of abilities in our game. So you're going to get another column right here. Potentially another two or three columns. Because we have a lot of abilities in our game. And you guys need the precision. Because we, we, we don't like doing... Where is it? We don't like doing these. We'd like to just include as much as possible down there. In some cases, we'll do it when we have to. Like an example would be the Black Hawk. Where like you have that button that you click on to hover when you're on the uh, the tax center. We want everything as, po as as much as humanly possible on that bottom right command window, which means that we're going to have to add two or three more columns, or just resize it slightly, and then add two or three more columns to that bottom right. Uh, yes, Buzz. Um, like, a, uh, hold on. So like, if I go to him, let me drop these guys. So one of the things that we've earmarked, we're just kind of cleaning up, based off of playing a lot of War Warcraft and Battle and uh, Bat War War of Warcraft, is like these abilities need, need to be expanded. We were talking, me and Michael were talking about the deploy gun earlier. There's no real reason to use it anymore. It was it was good when the game was more of like an XCOM inspired, like small scale battle, small squad engagements kind of stuff. But with the larger scale, it doesn't really make sense to have this kind of thing. So it's more of a thing where, like, border of operations, vehicles, airborne, everything else, and the airstrikes. So the idea is that when we get to the point of everything else, we're going to be looking at the assaults. We're going to be looking at the heavies, and we're going to redo all their abilities. And we're going to we're going to do it based off of like long term like intentionality of like rapid fire is going to stay. There's nothing wrong with that, but we're like. Deploy guns gonna change. It'll either be like a bipod or some kind of like tripod that they set up, where like it increases like accuracy or something, but doesn't penalize you so much in that co-scene. You know, those are all things that we gotta look at. You know, like the we're gonna be having it to where when you build units, you'll be able to switch between different grenade types. So like the spec ops will be able to get the most diverse amount of grenades, like smoke grenades. You know, uh, the sniper will gain some ability like being able to plant claymores. Um, what else is there? There's more, but I'm having a brain fart. Like, some of it's going to come just down to when we get to that point, we'll have a discussion at a meeting, and then we'll just execute. So, like, some of it's we're just waiting till we get to that point so we don't get too hard, too ahead of ourselves. And then when we get to that area, we'll, like, 
do an evaluation and figure out what else is really needed based off of how people play and engage with the units. Like, the engineer is going to gain pets. Like, the engineer would gain, like, these turrets right here are going to be deployable aliens type turrets, as an example. And then the turrets that we have right now, these are going to be replaced with, a, a, with like a prototype, like mecha turret, like a larger turret that's stationary. It's built up. It has a platform. And it makes it more, and it's more, huh? And it's basically more like chunky. It's more of a big boy. It's like that kind of stuff. So those are the things that we're looking at based off of we've been watching how people have been playing the game over years. We've been basically coming up with our own little wish list of things that we wish we had done better when we first released the game. And then we're just going to execute it on it. We're basically, and it's just an order of operations on this point. Um, yeah. And it's trying to do it with the intentionality and not having to go back and forth anymore. So we're trying to make these systems as finite as possible. They're doing pretty good on the evacuations right now. Let me just watch this for a second. That was weird how he left on 99. There's still some improvements to be had, I would say. Okay, well. Poor Zula. She, I skipped over her playtime. I do straight. She's going to murder me. She's bringing me a toy and throwing it at me. But I should have uh, took her out to go play like an hour ago. I'll go, I'll go outside and play in the dark. Screw it. All right, well. I think that pretty much sums it up. You guys can kind of see where we are in terms of what we're working on and what's going on and just kind of a little bit behind the scenes and how the process works for like taking notes and documenting. I mean, it's really just a matter of playing it. And again, I'll get bugs that you guys don't get. You guys, it's like vice versa. So it's always, you know, always very, very helpful when you guys play the build and you're like, this is what I'm running into. Here's my save files. Here's my, here's how I broke this. You know, it, it, it's very helpful. I mean, we're, we're only so many people that can uh, play test it at times. It's a very small team of like four or five people. Um, well, anyhow, thanks for joining. And I'm going to go offline because basically I need to go find something to eat. And then I need to make those two changes I said I was going to do for the repeater and for the gas and then wrap it for the night. Thank you guys so much for joining. And you guys have a good night or morning depending on where you are.